It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's here. Mary Jo Foley is here. We'll all in our isolated soundproof booths. We'll talk about the impact COVID-19 is having on Azure and the networks. The slowdown in releases of Credge and perhaps even the Windows Insider builds. Plus, there's a new sheriff in town for Windows Insiders. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly comes to you from our Twit LastPass studios. Stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication. LastPass makes enterprise-level security simple. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 665. Recorded Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. Social distancing pioneers. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by FreshBooks. Are you struggling to choose the right accounting software for your business? Let FreshBooks help you. The number one accounting software in the cloud for self-employed professionals and their teams. Try it free for 30 days at freshbooks.com slash windows. And by Thinkst Canary. Detect attackers on your network while avoiding irritating false alarms. Get the alerts that matter. For 10% off and a 60-day money-back guarantee, go to canary.tools slash twit and enter the code twit in the How Did You Hear About Us box. And by... ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. It's that easy. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we talk about uh, the latest from Redmond. Mary Jo Foley is here, sealed into her New York City apartment. She is now, we now are once again at ground zero, Mary Jo. Wow. Yep. I know. Well, stay <clears throat> stay safe. Stay uh, take care of yourself, and you and Sirachi. Okay. Um, are. Yeah, Paul Thorat, uh, Lower Mukunji Valley held hostage day seven. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. If Paul is at Thorat dot com. Mary Joe all about Microsoft dot com. Um, the nice thing is, you guys work from home, so this is mm -hmm. just you know more of the same. Except no no, <laughs> no visits to rattle and hum, which is kind of a I moment. know. Yeah. That's yeah, terrible. Yeah. yeah. I can't go to the gym. We usually go Darn. out on weekends, you know. Yeah. That's a bummer. It's only we're only like a week and a half into this. I mean I know. It, I know. It's, it, it says a lot about our fortitude that we're, you know, already <laughs> experiencing major Complaining. cabin I know. fever yep. issues, you know. But <laughs> totally a long way to go. So, you know, it's I fun. uh I actually wanted to screenshot. I was on Reddit, and, and there was a tragic story about a, a Italian friar, 71 years old, who was, mm -hmm. you know, said, don't give me a ventilator, give it to the young person. And of course, he passed away. The young person survived. And then right under that, there was a post, <laughs> something like, my iOS um, screen keeps showing this uh, error. Yeah. What's <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> there's a cares? real disconnect in the world. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to write about this in my editorial for next Monday, but it's it is a weird thing as tech enthusiasts. Um, it, it's hard to get excited by anything these days, you know. Yeah. And it's not because things aren't kind of happening in the world of tech. I mean, it, it, it almost seems it seems like we're forcing things to happen just to keep our minds off of other things. But you know, it's hard to be enthusiastic. <laughs> you I know, know, last night I was almost feeling like. And please forgive this, because of course this is a horrible thought. But this was sure. like a needed correction. Yeah. That in some ways the virus was sent here to tell uh, us to, to help us remember what's important. What's important, exactly. Yeah. And I, I think yeah. we might come out of this a little uh, wiser and better for it. So in in tech terms, you know, Microsoft had sent out some stuff to the press last week with regards to the Teams milestones and everything. And it, Jared Spataro said something that I thought was very interesting, which was that it, from a work perspective, things are not ever going to go back to the way they were before, right? Now, obviously, some things will go back. I mean, we don't, but we're not going to just totally go back. I, I think there was a lot of, um, there was still some pushback against things like cloud computing, and especially around remote working. And kind of traditional people who thought, like, I have to see people in an office and they got to work nine to five. And if they're not here, they're not getting work done. I, I, I think those attitudes are going to shift. Um, but, 
Yeah, from a broader perspective, I mean, just, uh, you know, um, yeah. I mean, uh, some guy was on Twitter saying, hey, does anyone have any news about when the next Apple TV is coming out? So huh, exactly. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> who cares? I mean, you like, know what? We got to keep what doing our doing. jobs, though. We have to, like, to just oh, distract no, course, ourselves at least, right? <laughs> No, no, right. I, of course, and I and and, but I, but you know, even even in the best of times, you know, one of the things that I used to write about from time to time was this idea that we need to walk away from this sometimes, <laughs> you know, some and literally yeah. in many cases walk, <laughs> you know, get, take the headphones right. off, stop listening to something, Thank or you. stop, yeah. yeah, you know, you don't have yeah. to be entertained twenty four seven, you know. Um, we were going down that road where we just spent all of our lives staring at a screen. Yeah, and now we still do, but we're refreshing CNN.com. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, you know, whatever yeah, news yeah. Yeah. service you prefer. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, you know, it, it's certainly a, a watershed moment in our history, and probably for most of us, well, I guess 9-11 counts uh, as a turning point yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. um, sure. <laughs> you know, if you were old enough to live through the Great Depression. It does, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to say, this is more of a worldwide thing. It's I mean, global. this is a... It's global. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. is... Uh, yeah, this is a wake up call. You know. My son is uh, in Bali. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, really? Bali High is calling. Oh. <laughs> but uh, uh -oh. <laughs> uh, he, I, you Does know, the gates come down if you start coughing. What happens? <laughs> it's interesting because he was so he he left for uh, a indefinite stay in Asia at the end of December, right. and uh, he's been in Vietnam. You, I know you, Mary Jo, you love it, and uh, in Thailand. Uh, and uh, he was in Vietnam, and it was starting to get harder and harder for non uh, for tourists. You know, they were right. they wouldn't let you in shops and things. So he went to Bali, where the party continued until very recently, but now yeah. they're starting to shut things down. And uh, he's been trying to get home, and it's not it's not easy. I think he's going to be able I to know. come home uh, day after tomorrow via okay. Tokyo. So, oh, that's good. but he was gonna he couldn't he was gonna go through uh, Taipei, but Taiwan is closed to. Uh, Air travel, so it's just don't use the uh, cruise ship route. It's my <laughs> advice. Exactly. You know? <laughs> well, and uh, yeah, we canceled our cruise for next January. Yeah, because oh, wow. I well, I don't know if I want to go to Asia before mm -hmm. there's a vaccine. To be honest, yeah, right. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Right. Plus, um, you know, if this is seasonal, which it could be, it, it might. Be, you know, even if we get over it, it we might be coming back next year. The um, history of the. Uh, 1918 flu pandemic was it came back with a vengeance in the fall mm -hmm. okay. and it was much worse in the fall so it, it did peter out in the summer I, you know i don't think there's much evidence at this point that covid is uh, affected by temperatures because of course singapore right. is a very hot place and there's lots of places where uh, covid has thrived despite yeah. the temperature so i don't know what it'll be like we don't nobody knows but i yeah, thought well i'll be prudent we'll cancel that we had a trip to germany in june that's canceled uh that's kind of ironic. Did I talk about this last week? This was the Oberammergau Festival. A Every decade, they hold a passion play in this little German town. They've been doing it since the 1600s because in the 1600s, they were passed over by the plague. Oh, wow. Mm. And so our travel agent said, you know, they may not cancel because the whole reason for this festival... Sure. <laughs> is to celebrate surviving the plague. They were no, canceled. Nobody wants that irony on the yeah. They were canceled. Um, <laughs> sure. they said, yeah, we're going to do this in 2022, I think they said. Mm -hmm. Just like Tokyo, the Olympics. We're going to put this off a couple of years. Yep. So anyway, this is not the COVID show, but you know, when we get together with old friends, I think that's what everybody's doing, right? How you doing? How's sure. everything going? Uh, but today we're here to talk about Windows and uh, mm -hmm. even Windows 10. Is, uh, yes, is 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 pausing? <laughs> you know, Google said, yeah. uh, and I thought this is really interesting. Google said we're not going to update Chrome and Chrome OS for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I thought people working at home, maybe you'd get more done. So we'll get to that part of it. We're going <laughs> to talk about the Chrome thing in a yeah. bit, but um, well, but Microsoft's was, doing something similar, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. So uh, anyone who has followed along with the way Microsoft does servicing for Windows 10 knows that every single week you get updates right. these days, right? It's not just Patch Tuesday. Like the first t Tuesday of the month, you get Office updates. Second Tuesday, Patch Tuesday. Then you also get updates that are optional, that are not security updates on weeks three and four, which Microsoft calls weeks C and D. So, By the way, did you, did you hear <laughs> that? Did you know that before this week? 
Yeah. Have you ever heard that? Those ter- oh, you had. I, I, I was. I, I was. Yeah. Mahedi asked me about that. I had no idea what it meant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's so, just the four weeks of the month. Okay. I know. Yeah. So they call week one A, week two B. So Patch Tuesdays on B. So week C and D, starting in May, there aren't going to be these cumulative updates with feature uh, with with uh, features being tested uh, that are optional that right. will be coming out. They're just not going to have these optional cumulative updates on weeks C and D. So it's funny. The reason they instituted that was because they wanted to let IT departments who felt like they wanted to test some of the things that would show up in the following patch Tuesday, see them early. But right. when they announced this yesterday, I saw a lot of IT pros saying, yay, they're not going to do updates anymore in week C and D. So I'm like, oh, wait, they did this for you, but you hate it. And now you're happy it's going away. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? This is yeah. This is a little convoluted, but what this reminds me of is you'll see a warning. It could be about a you know, a drug in a TV ad or about some food item. And it'll say, if you're pregnant, don't eat this thing or you take this yeah. thing or whatever. Right. And I always think to myself, you know, maybe that's just good advice for everybody. If if, if that's the advice for pregnant people, what, I mean, maybe no one should have that thing. And if Microsoft mm-hmm. is doing this now because of all the awful stuff going on in the world, eh, maybe this should just be the way it is, you know? Yeah. Maybe they right. should never And maybe it will be, right? Yeah. Maybe it will be. Yeah. Because yeah. Let, yeah, uh, let's see, yesterday was Tuesday, the fourth Tuesday of the month. And so they did release optional updates for Windows 1903 and, and 1909 yesterday. So right. these don't automatically get applied to people's PCs. This is just an optional update that your IT department can decide to test out, or if they want, they can implement it for everyone. Uh, so that did come out this month because this isn't going to take effect until May. Until May. CD and going. by the way, that's interesting itself. Um, do you know why they're waiting until May? Mm-mm, I don't know. Yeah, as, as opposed to, say, uh, April. April? No, nope, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be more the norm anymore. Like anything that's non-essential, you're going to just see Microsoft and other companies saying, you know what? We don't really need to be doing this right now. Let's stick to things that are essential and that we have to do. So I saw a lot of people saying, oh, does that mean 20H1 isn't going to come out this spring? Nope, that doesn't mean that, right? Because 20H1 is a feature update. It's not an optional cumulative update. It is a new feature release, and that is going to be coming out. We don't know when still. My guess would be April. Also been done for over three months, you know, other than the cumulative updates that they have added to it since it was completed. But yep. Yeah. I think they're in the process of trying to bring more testing to yes. these feature updates, which is very good. Like not, yep, we shouldn't not, be complaining. Not a bad idea. Yep. <laughs> After what happened a couple times last year, you know, mm-hmm. I, I welcome more testing. I'm not mad that yep. they're holding the back. No, no, I don't. I, I don't even think they're holding it back. I, this might even literally have been always the schedule. I, I, maybe so far, I. You know, we've kind of speculated, oh, maybe this will be the week. It's Patch Tuesday in March. Or, okay, yeah. now maybe it'll be Patch Tuesday in April, you know, whatever. But, yeah. you know, if it's May and it hasn't happened yet, okay, yes. I, I mean, know. maybe at that point. Right. But uh, as yeah. of today, I mean, I, I don't think anything unusual has occurred with regards to 2004. I think, I think from what I had heard, the plan, the original plan was to try to do it in March, even though okay. it was called the April update, um, just to yeah. at least kick off the update process. But... Mm-hmm. You know, with all that's going on, there's no rush for this. There, there, like we yep. keep saying, there aren't any gigantic features in this that are must-haves. And so right. them holding it back or just not releasing it yet, I don't think it's a big deal, to be honest. It's not a big deal at all. And and for those people who are enthusiasts or developer types who want it, you know, the Linux stuff, yeah. it's readily accessible it's if you want it. It is. Yeah. No, you it can is. get it you right now if you it. want it. Yeah, you can. You can. Is it in the store or, uh, no, no, it's it's available via the Windows uh, Insider download site. So if you oh, want to so get the ISO just and just install it, or you could uh, put your machine yeah. in, I think it's a release preview now, and you'll get 20. Is it in release preview? I can't remember where I we're think at. So it's slow ring is. It's been yeah, in the why slow can't ring. I remember this. Sure. It might be slow ring then. I'm sorry. Yeah, it might be because I'm not sure if it's in release preview. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. It is. It's slow ring. Yeah. It is slower. Okay. okay. And the other thing they've paused uh, around Windows was seven. If you're on, if you're still on 1709, which came out in 2017, 
um, for some reason. This would be businesses, if you, specific, specific. Businesses, right. If, yeah. you, if you're like an enterprise, an EDU customer or IoT and you're on 1709, Microsoft's giving you six extra months of security updates for that. So instead of shutting that off in April, they're going to shut it off in October. So you have more, six months more time to get off 1709. We're going to be seeing a lot of stuff Other, like this, I think. We are know, going to see a lot. Throughout this. the industry. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I think all, those are both good news. Is that because, why do you think that is? Is it, I mean, it, it puzzles me because I feel like um, it, we're, well, working at home is not so it, different from working in the office. In fact, maybe you'd be more productive. At least the snacks are better. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, no. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, it's probably just the support that might be required. I mean, anytime computers are updated, I mean, you know, Mary, we just talked before the show about the issue Mary Jo had with her Surface laptop. Uh, based on what I saw on Twitter today, I suspect we're going to discover that there is a problem with a firmware update and Microsoft will, you know, issue something, blah, 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 whatever. But, you know, there are all kinds of problems that happen every time you update software. So, And you have to do that, that in, stuff a, down. in an office, a centralized environment to do a good job of that. Or just they I think don't want to release the potential chance. burden because we yeah. all have enough stuff to deal yeah. with. And it's okay, that makes sense. Just yeah. you know, why look, mess it's with not it? Crucial, so let's not yeah. worry about it. Um, not this essential. This is not the time. Yeah. It's not the time. Yep. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. most of the time we'll be fine, but that's you know. Apple had some problems uh, with uh, employees off campus because they're tight yeah. security, right? They did, it that's was right. very mm -hmm. difficult for them to do some of the things they wanted to do because they couldn't VPN to the the this makes me wonder about WWDC because uh, Google had to can or ended up canceling I/O because of the California rules about staying at home, et cetera. Right. That not um, just cancel I/O; they canceled the streaming version. That's of it what as I mean. Well. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering if Apple will be forced to do something similar. Um, yeah, because in order to, that is California. the case. I know a little bit about streaming. Yeah. You you can't just you know one guy there, one guy there. We're doing it, but. We've yeah, been set yeah. up for years. You can't have a conference and say, "Okay, everybody in their own office." I mean, it's well, just, not I, with the law. Apple security is based on physical security. That's I mean, right. They have multiple key doors that you go through, and that's right. Everything happens in a room, and no one takes it up with them when they leave. That's and right. you when you're working that. on that kind of stuff with that kind of security, it makes the remote thing difficult. Yep. So, you know, we know in Microsoft's case, we've seen it on Twitter. Uh, various people from Microsoft have been saying, hey, look, here we are recording our session for build, whatever. So I think the build virtual thing will continue. Oh, good. Okay. Slightly different situation uh, in Washington State. It's kind of interesting, um, though. It's no, I, I don't think it's an accident that the tech hubs are all yeah. hard hit. Santa Clara County's hard hit. Seattle, obviously, yeah. very hard hit. New York City, very hard hit. Lower Mukunji Valley, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who can say out here? I mean, I yeah. no, we don't know because nobody's tested. We have no idea where the, yeah. where the virus yeah. lives. I went to Walmart the other day. There was there were guys walking around in camouflage outfits, and uh, I mean, I don't think these guys are getting tested. You know, yeah. I, I I don't know. Yeah. So, but I but it is the case uh, uh, that because there's so much travel between China and these tech yeah. hubs, yeah, yeah. Of course. that uh, I think they were the probably the first. Well, you know what? To it, get it. It's also. I'm sorry, I interrupted. It's also a population density thing, right? And obviously, that's, well, that's why what New the York problem is in New so York. Hard. Yeah. Um, Boy, that's so uh, that's, sad. It just breaks my heart. I just. But it's a um, population density is its own issue. But you're also going to get many, many more reports and many, many more people being tested. Right. Whereas that's right. isolated yeah. people may not even tell someone. It's in some cases, you know, depending on who they are and where they are. I mean, so. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that the West Coast and especially the tech hubs are particularly. Oh, no, high. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, Santa Clara Valley is not that dense. Uh, Silicon Valley is, is fair, as you know, you've both, you know, spent yeah, time yeah, there. Yeah. It's not, it's spread out, but it's not, but I think a lot of people working a in lot of things. Very going really a lot of travel. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I, I don't know. I think, uh, what do you think? Are we going to, is this going to, What's what is the what is the long term echo down down is Duo are Duo and Neo going to be held up? Uh, <laughs> right, I think everything. <laughs> well, it's unknown. Go ahead. I, yeah, I I I think everything's on the table. Yep, <laughs> honestly, okay. at this yep. point, Just although unknown. I I don't know. Did you see Nadella's been on TV this week talking about how China's their supply chains coming back? Right. So I think that's meant to tell people 
All right. Yeah, we still okay. think we can get these products out. You know? yeah. Okay. But uh, without, I am not, to, to be clear, uh, not a conspiracy theory kind of guy. But yeah. when Apple says stuff like, hey, we think we're going to get our stores opening to some degree within the next number of weeks, or Microsoft yeah. CEO gets on TV and talks about the supply chain in China, I think a lot of that has to do with protecting the stock price and helping the economy yeah, sure. and is more about appearance than it is about valid expectations. I mean, I, I don't think anyone knows yeah, uh, how things anyone. are going to go. So, you know, we'll see. I, I think we talked about this last week. I, and if we didn't, I mean, I think it, it bears repeating regardless. I don't see any scenario where Ignite can happen this year. I, I just don't see any way What's, it could possibly When is that happen. and it, when, where is that? September in New Orleans. Oh, gosh, no. New Orleans, another, no way. another yeah. uh, devastated area. There's no way. Yeah. They and may the way, end up being Ignite's, the worst of all because they had Mardi Gras and, yeah, and did nothing about it. And uh, it's, it's terrible there right now. Yeah. So that's their most important trade show. It's their biggest trade yeah, show. No, it's the central event for the entire company. Yeah. That's not going to happen. No. Um, something like Neo or Duo. Yeah. I mean, are we serious? Does I mean, come on. I, Talk yes, about I inessential. People, <laughs> yeah, I, absolutely inessential. And I know there are people listening to this who are clinging to this hope that this, this stuff's going to happen. It's going to be awesome. But uh, you got to understand in the broader scope of things, in the broader scope of Microsoft and its revenues and its future, it, these things don't matter in the slightest. What and, what um, is mission critical for Microsoft? Keeping the Azure running, keeping well, the, the operating yeah, the network, cloud, the cloud the services, cloud of course. Yeah. I mean, and I think we're we going to talk have more about that. Yeah, we bit. have we have this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. I mean, you've yeah. seen the stuff where like YouTube is running at 480p now. Um, there's, I think, there's a general understanding out in the world that we need to keep these essential services running because so many businesses rely on them, and that's that yeah. is the real key to not just people getting paid and having livelihoods, but the economy running and you know, us continuing <laughs> as a people or whatever. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, that stuff's important. Six months of free security updates for 1709 users. In other words, they're extending the end of life for yep. September yep. 2017. I know. Business. There are still people running for that. Business. There are still, yeah. still some people running that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Not a lot, but there are people out there. But and I think <clears throat> 2004, or as I consider it, 20H1, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. what it, what is going to happen there? I mean, yeah, pretty soon. It's coming soon. April. I think April they are going to. It was done, it. right? It's done. Yeah, it's done. Yeah. yeah. So there's no reason not to, unless my yeah. <laughs> stops dealing with other issues right now, yeah. like the Adobe Type Manager issue. Um, well, yeah. So um, the only thing is, like this one is done. But you know, in keeping with that conversation we just had around not potentially overburdening, in this case it would be individuals as well as businesses, is 2004 crucial to anything? Right. You could hold I off know. on that. If it's, the answer you know, is no. It's, yeah, it's stable. Not. We're, we're yeah. all going for stability now. Yeah. yeah. You know, our, our IT guy is home, Russell. We don't want him, and all our employees are home. We sure. have, uh, you know, we have remote logins, so, you know, they can work on people's computers, but our uh, accountant who's working out of her house is having a problem with her computer today. Yeah. The last thing you want, right? And right. Um, right. and uh, I'm hoping that they can lo re remote log in remotely and figure it out. But that's that's about the worst thing that could happen. So you, if you've got a stable version of Windows, mm -hmm. just keep it going. Just keep it I going. Know. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep, yep. We'll see. I, I'm pretty sure though. I I haven't heard anything about delays in 2004 as far as like pushing it back to fall or something crazy like that. I think they're going to release yeah, it pretty soon. Right. They do. Although, you know, uh, the new system they've adopted where 2004 in this case would become kind of the uh, short-term right, the version the and uh, 20H2 yeah. becomes the long-term. I mean, combining yeah. them into a single thing, uh, when you think about it, that's what 1903 and 1909 were. Yeah. They were really the same version of Windows. So um, if, if everything continues going south, then that's what has to happen. You know, I, I think they're kind of well, set up you. to make that happen, and it's yeah. not a huge problem, you know. So we'll see. I mean, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but um, I know. But yeah, I, I. But yeah, I mean, I. I certainly agree that 2004 is not critical <laughs> to anything. So um, yeah, if they wanted to and push again, it back, I, this is the this the mixed blessing of this virus. Maybe I know. Maybe no, Microsoft will learn a lesson I mean, here. Yes. 
Well, yeah. you know, I hate yeah, to say not, that. Not to, like, and I, I, I don't mean this like I told you so. Like I told you that coronavirus was going to happen. But, you know, people like us have been complaining for years uh, that this system, which, I mean, as soon as they announced it, it was so patently obviously wrong for businesses, was untenable. This this twice like, yearly you, update thing. Yeah, what are you talking about? You did, you used to upgrade every three years, but support every, for 10 years, yeah. meaning that most businesses didn't upgrade their systems but once a decade. And now you're telling me that they have to upgrade twice a year or like once every 18 months in most cases, whatever. That's crazy. Like that, nobody, nobody wanted that. And, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, we've talked about this a lot. This is something that's come up literally over five years now. So um, um, I know they have their rationale for it. I know they felt like they, they um, internally, I'm sure they had something to prove that they could do this, that it was possible. We have ample evidence that they can't even in the best of times do it. And now that something really serious is happening, you know, maybe this is the the trigger we need to roll that back. Not to, you know, we're not we have to go back three three years, ten years, whatever. I don't mean it like that, but this is just too aggressive. It's pointlessly aggressive. <laughs> he says for literally the thousandth time on the show. I know. So. <laughs> I, know. I, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, let's let's take a little uh, time out. There is more <laughs> to talk of time about. Out, including uh, stick him in the corner. <laughs> a new uh, a new insider chief taking yeah. um, Donna's. Is place. Donna move Where's she going? She went to She's the power, power platforms. Stuff. Okay, good. Because yep. we love her, uh, yep. but I'm sure we'll love Amanda just as mm -hmm. much. We'll also uh, talk about the secret message in Panos Panes. Uh. <laughs> uh, uh, talk and uh, and a lot edge teams <laughs> somebody said teams isn't working again today I don't know uh, and uh, the cloud lots to talk about Mary Joe Foley Paul Therott. Uh you're you're listening to or watching Windows Weekly we glad you are we will continue to talk about the stories uh, affecting people who uh, use Microsoft products because it's still it's still going on. In fact, in many ways, you're using them more than ever, right? That's uh, that's the that's the good news. And I hope you, uh, if you like the show, that you subscribe to it. We'd love. Uh, I know the the problem we're facing is a lot of people listen in their commute and don't have commutes anymore. Find a time, sit down around the uh, the Cortana and uh, and listen. <laughs> Warm your hands at the glow of your Amazon Echo and listen to uh, Windows Weekly. If you subscribe, you'll get it every week and your favorite podcast application. But, of course, we make it available on YouTube. Now in sizzling 480p. Uh, actually, I think you can... Can't you turn it up, Paul? I think if you... It it defaults to 480. And if you want, you can get a little higher. Oh, is that true? I think somebody told sure. me that. I haven't tried. Uh, but consider the, consider your friends and family and their... It's like the people needs. hoarding toilet paper. Yeah, I'm going to crank hoard. it up to 4K just as don't we can. Ho don't hoard the bits, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, we're all in this together. Our show today brought to you by a great sponsor for everybody who is working at home because they're freelancers <laughs> or they have their own business. Uh, FreshBooks. FreshBooks. With everything going on in the world, FreshBooks wants you to know you are not alone. Isolation is something many small business owners deal with every single day. Of course, uh, now a lot of other people are experiencing it as well. Let FreshBooks help you work from home. Uh, make the transition smoother. Download the app today. And if, if you've always worked from home, I hope you know about FreshBooks. It's the ultimate in keeping tabs on your business anywhere, anytime. You can create client profiles, uh, enable automatic recurring invoices. I love that feature. FreshBooks for me started with the invoices. In fact, that's really, I think, for most people because it made it a lot easier to do that chore at the end of the month I always hated. Putting off, uh, together the invoices, and I'd put it off and then not get paid, and it was just not a happy cycle. I started using FreshBooks years ago when they first started, and I've been a fan ever since. They make it easy, but it's interesting because just by doing the invoices, beautiful-looking, professional invoices, your logo, and really nice because these invoices are uh, online, and as soon as you're a FreshBooks customer, you can accept online payments. On average, Fresh, FreshBooks users get paid a lot faster I know I did because there's a pay it button right right on the invoice. It turns out your customers don't like the chore of paying bills any more than you like the chore of sending bills. So if they see that pay it button, they go, yeah, let's get this out of the way. 
it really conditions them to just say, yeah, look, you pay it and you can take a credit card. You don't have to do anything to set this up. It's really a nice feature. Uh, FreshBooks automatically combines then the, uh, the invoices, the billable time, your expenses. Even if you don't bill for T&E, even if your expenses are just your expenses, FreshBooks can even log into your bank account every day and download expenses. You, in effect, are getting your accounting done. And that's pretty sweet. It, their, their accounting and reporting tools make it easier to do your taxes, evaluate your financials. For me, it was the first time as a freelancer I knew whether I was making money at any given time. I usually had to wait till tax time to find out if I had a profit. Let FreshBooks help you get through this tough time. 24 million people, including me, have used FreshBooks. Four and a half out of five stars on GetApp. It lets you focus on why you got into business, not on the books. I, was, I am terrible at bookkeeping. I hate invoicing. But FreshBooks made it easy. It does all the invoicing, expensing, tracking hours. They've saved users almost 200 hours a year in average. Plus, you can stop chasing the money your clients owe you. You'll also get notifications the minute the client opens the invoice. So no more, uh, I didn't get your invoice. No, you know. And FreshBooks can be set up to automatically send late payment reminders and bill late fees. They make it very easy. And the team is so great up in Toronto. They're a wonderful support team, and they are there to help. FreshBooks.com slash Windows. If you go there right now, you show your support for the show. Put Windows Weekly in the How Did You Hear About Us section. You'll get 30 days free. You can try it and see if you like it. FreshBooks.com slash Windows. Don't forget to let them know you heard it on Windows Weekly. By the way, for a limited time, FreshBooks is offering 50% off your first three months when you signed up for the paid plan. That's for new customers only. Offers can't be combined. This is a really great way. to Try FreshBooks, and when you sign up, 50% off for the first three months. A great way to get started in these tough times. You're going to be glad you have FreshBooks. It gives you more time to do the things you love. FreshBooks.com slash Windows. We thank them so much for their support of Windows Weekly. Amanda Langowski. That's exciting. New head of uh, Windows of the Insider. Group. Why do you laugh at me? I no, I laugh it because exciting. it is exciting. But you know what was funny about this? When when this announcement happened, I was like, who is she? I didn't know. And oh, it I, turns I out. I didn't need Dinah to talk to you about this. I thought okay. for sure you would know who she was. She, no. I, it, 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 who is she? Her, no, she's she been at Microsoft familiar. for 20 years. And she's what? been on Windows for 20 years. Wow. So this was like gay ball to me. Like, I didn't know who this guy yeah. was. And he I know, had been same. A, you know. He'd been yeah. building Windows for ten years, twenty years, I know. or whatever. Well, uh, I mean, there are five thousand people who build Windows and work. No, on I Windows, know that, right? but it just—I don't know. It, <laughs> I, anyway, I was. She looks familiar to me, and I was curious. She so looks you at, don't know her. Yeah, no, she she's been on. I think some of the insider webcasts because she has been in charge of flighting the um, the builds. So she's not. It's not like she, she just was pulled in from some other part of the company or whatever, but. Yeah, I think it's exciting, and I think it's cool they picked another woman to head up the Windows Insider program mm -hmm. after Don. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's nice to see. Uh, so yeah, she she looks good on paper. <laughs> I hope we get to talk right. to her and meet her. Maybe we can bring her on the show, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, so, she's she's been doing engineering. She even worked on Windows Phone um, and Windows Mobile as part of the release management team. So yeah, she's been around. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, no, I did not know her. Um, okay. And it's going to be interesting to meet her. So, yeah. So, did you also get this vibe from Panos's short uh, post about her appointment that there's some changes coming? <laughs> like, did you get, did, did you, I don't, and again, this is like me, uh, me saying I'm not into conspiracy theories and clearly this is me believing in a conspiracy theory. <laughs> um, but I feel like this is like a coded message in some ways, you know? There's certain words and language that he uses that I, I, I think are really interesting. So I'll just point out the most obvious one. Okay. Enhancing our communication, which I've often complained yes. about, just throwing that out there, with legacy insiders. Mm -hmm. Legacy insiders? <laughs> what the heck? What is who, legacy insiders growing the no, diversity so they, of our community? Right. So look at this. They say they have 18 million insiders about now right wow, we know wow. from people we've well, talked to that a very that. very much smaller number of people are testing these builds like maybe yeah. one million that's what right? i heard <laughs> yeah yeah one so million active actually active. i would say 
their legacy insiders are those 1 million people who have been at the forefront of doing this testing and they want to figure out why people aren't doing it and they want to make more people get engaged with the program, right? That That's a very good goal. That's, you have to, important. the other thing they never really talk about is engagement with Windows Insider for Business, which I have to think is incredibly non-existent. <laughs> you know, yeah. just, just, yeah. I, I understand why they would have tiny. such a program. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah. imagine there's a lot of engagement with business. I know. Who well, again, and then for are our, already overwhelmed as it is. I know. Do you remember for a very brief time, there also was a Microsoft 365 Insiders program that was supposed to be the um, successor to Windows for Business. It never actually mm -hmm. happened. They announced it and then it right. never happened. Um, so that I would think is another uh -huh. direction they probably will go. But you know, this, this um, blog post, this is the first time Panos is talking publicly as the new right. head of Windows experiences, right? We know he yep. just recently was appointed to do that in addition to his job as head of Surface. And we haven't heard anything from him. Like we knew this happened and then mm -hmm. nothing. So I think this is him saying, I know I haven't said anything yet. I have, I have ideas. I have things I want to do and stay right. tuned. That's kind of how I read this. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, it's very clear yeah. that the Insider program, first of all, I, 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 and just to put a positive spin on it, I think the Insider program is a great idea. Um, yeah. I, you know, we also have to sort of recognize that it partially came out of this notion that Microsoft got rid of a lot of internal testing and, and needed this kind of thing. But I, I think engaging with people who are enthusiasts for the platform is smart. And, Me too. Um, and, you know, if they do it right, their, their feedback could, in fact, as he says, transforms uh, transform the product, right? Which is great too. Yeah. Um, so we can argue, you know, how many people there are and whether or not that's effective, whatever. But the idea is solid. And so I, yeah. I think he, no, he literally says that. I mean, he believes in the power of the program and I think that's great. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, there need to be some changes. And one of the weird things about Donna leaving because she left, I want to say it was last October. October. It was October. Yeah. was that yeah. this thing has been effectively leaderless since then, although we talked to her at Ignite and she was saying, she's like, you know, obviously I know all those people and I'm still involved and she, I think she still was helping out here and there as needed yeah. or whatever. And they but, had a, they had an interim director. I'm forgetting his name right now, but there okay. was somebody in okay. charge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I think, I, I think, needs, you know what? We need to hear from version. Panos, right? I think Panos is waiting for the right time. If they do some kind of spring hardware launches, that would be yeah. a time when Panos would come out and say, hey, now I'm also the head of Windows, by the way, and here's some of the things I so, want to do. I mean, how's that going to work? You, you remember, the, you remember, you know that the last two Surface events have had yeah. plugs in the audience so that you know people could clap at all the right times because he needs that kind of feedback. I mean, how is Panos going to handle a product launch in the age of virtual events yeah. i mean they can't even have an in-house crowd uh at these yeah. things so they're gonna pipe in applause like a like it's a <laughs> 70 sitcom or something like I how does i don't even recognize him in this picture you, on your, on your yeah. no, he looks a little different right he does. he's like he's a little, a little wow. scrappy looking yeah he looks like a surgeon spent a little too much time in the operating <laughs> yeah. room i don't know it's yeah. yeah. like a surgeon yeah. so i know yeah i, I mean like without weeks. clapping it's Apple's going to have that same thing. Everybody's right? going to have I mean, that problem. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, you know, first, you we know tried what, to Paul? watch that GDC presentation yeah. uh, last week, and I think that was oh the problem. God. It was that Ugh. they were talking right. into a vacuum. Oh, it was brutal. No, I think yeah. at the beginning, when they used to do Surface events, before they started having invited guests, remember, it was all quiet. Like, it would be the press sitting there. It would be the, the Surface team presenting, and there would be no applause. Well, remember, he would go into the audience, he'd say, like, what is it, what's it going to take for you to give up that MacBook Air to get one of these yeah. Surface devices? Yeah. And everyone was like, yeah, he likes I don't to think interact so. with the crowd. Like, yeah. No, thanks. He I don't does. think he was getting yeah. the, you know, he wasn't getting the response, you know, <laughs> yeah. I think he wanted. Right. Like, right. no, I'm good with the Mac. Keep I'm happy. Talking. That's good. I'm happy. Well, he took your That's Surface, didn't I he? I type on it and it works. It's fine. <laughs> he, he took he did. yours. He Paul. took mine. Or, he you know, took mine. He didn't take mine. Yeah, he took, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, you've seen so, this. By the way, this is not uncommon. And those of us who are used to talking to a blank wall, which is everybody yeah. on this network, uh, know how to do it. That's called radio. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, right. I'm, you know, teacher, there are a lot of teachers are saying, and we don't know how to, we're used to sitting in front yeah, of a class you know, of 30 people and it's quiet in here. I don't know what to do. 
I got to yeah, tell you though, sorry. in our industry, I think there are a lot more people like us than there are people who feel comfortable getting up on oh, a stage absolutely. in front of other people. Absolutely. Those people could shine yeah. during this time. So if uh, Microsoft or these other tech companies are trying to hold virtual conferences, find those guys because <laughs> yeah. they're going to be yeah. okay. Uh, you know, uh, talking yep. into, the, you, uh, podcasters, into the nothingness. The future yeah. is ours. Yeah. Yes. Yep. You have a fa you know, you have a voice for virtual conferences. Um, <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> uh, Alex yeah. Lindsay, our colleague Alex Lindsay's really busy right now. That's his business, is streaming. Yeah. And he's being yep. called right and left by right. companies to say, Yeah, we gotta we gotta take this we conference and take this. it virtual. Yeah. It's not easy. If there's a lot of technology involved and, it's, and if you haven't done it before, it's it can right. be very By the challenging. Way, I think this is gonna be a big part of the future when we talk about how things aren't ever gonna go back to the way they were. Not that some things don't return, obviously, but they'll they'll be in-person events. Of course they will. I think there's going to be a lot more of this virtual event type stuff. And I think tech companies uh, and other companies are going to look at their schedule and say, do we really need to have all of these times when we uproot like, you know, dozens of people yeah. and bring them to some location and whatever? I mean, uh, virtual events make sense. So. Yeah. I, uh, I have to this, say, and I apologize I for this, but Sony's PlayStation event with Mark Cherney was yeah. really great. Uh, no, no, it was. You're right. It was. It, he, it was intimate. And in a way, yeah. uh, if you know what you're doing, these could be much more informative, much more valuable. If you're not playing, you know, projecting out to the audience, it's, right. very, it's a very different uh, experience. I have to say, <laughs> did you see um, uh, John Oliver's uh, Last Week Tonight, uh, the last one he did bef you know, before they shut down? He was all alone in a white room, no audience. <laughs> and the jokes just... Same jokes. Yeah. Great yeah. writers yeah. Sure. fell flat. Yep. So right. it's a but different they've been writing to us. I know, but it, they've been the writing Apple to an Keynote audience. Problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apple Keynote. You, you know, like the script for an Apple Keynote is pause, pause. for undo applause. It probably says it yeah. in the script. Yeah. <laughs> applause. That's line what I mean. Here. Like, you know, it's yeah. built in. Like, they're going to go nuts over this. I'm going to say the word teraflops. So watch this. Um, <laughs> and it, it, yeah, that's not going to happen anymore, folks. Might as so. well have an applause sign in the. Steve Jobs exactly. Theater, right? Yeah. Well, I. But if, as far as I'm concerned, I like it. Uh, I. Uh, this yeah. is an opportunity to communicate better, but yeah. you have to get the right people. That's all. Maybe. Maybe you that's do. what Amanda's uh, skill is. Maybe she's really uh, yeah. good at intimate yeah. communication, as opposed to kind of in front of a crowd. Well, they definitely need communication. <laughs> I yeah. Hope so. Uh, I yeah. hope that's the case. Maybe this is. Maybe what you're really seeing between the lines is Panos is. So, uh, self awareness that he needs an audience, but we found somebody who can really communicate in a in a different kind of setting. Maybe that's what she's. Well, I, I mean, this is she's specifically insider, right? She's so just they, insider. Yeah, she's not going to be presenting at a surface. I think Panos can house. learn. I think he can learn how to do it. He just has to understand it's going to be different. I I was really surprised to discover that they that they literally put people in the audience because he wanted that kind of feedback and he wasn't getting it from the press right I, I i love that guy and i i have a big problem with that like that's that's weird <laughs> like i i just thought that was strange you know like you just said though people have different presentation styles right and yes. there are a lot of people who are the best speakers that ignite and build and they have cultivated this so that they have this rapport with the audience right, right. for you and me we'd be happy if nobody else was in the room Oh, I love those But these days. people would not. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> yeah. Right. These people will days. not. I mean, they, they've developed the whole, like, I, shtick, basically, right? I how think they, what Mary Jo is saying, if, if I could put the words in your mouth, is that we are social distancing pioneers. We are. <laughs> is that, is that is just to kind of put a positive spin on it? has come. Yes, right. Finally. We, I've been training for this for years. <laughs> I have literally 43 years yeah. I've been training talking to a wall. That's yeah, my yeah. life. And and it's mm -hmm. funny because the people uh, around me, my family and friends, don't understand it because I, I'm such right. an introvert in real situations. Yeah, but but when it's just me and my, <laughs> my eyes are closed, I can talk <laughs> up a storm. <laughs> you know what? So I... I never believed that about you until we went to St. Louis. And then I, you know. I was like, he's, he's, he's I'm telling quiet. the truth. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Cause we were sitting next to each other at dinner and I'm like, Leo is like being really quiet. Yeah. <laughs> quiet. Well, yeah, everybody also, else was um, talking. So I just sat back. They used to say yeah. that about Johnny Carson. He'd go to a party and yeah. sit in the corner. That's right. 
That's right. He had no friends. Well, he had friends, but he would really? go. To, yeah. He'd oh, just, he was so shy. Painfully shy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, you know, I've been working from home since 1994, and I'd like to say I find all of you people's complaints about working from home to be cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny because Lisa's, you know, who's the opposite of me, yeah. is working from yes. home. She took over one end of the dining room table. She's got basically the same. She took all the stuff home from the office. And oh, this thing goes on long enough. Your dining room will look like her office. She, it will be. I came home. Yesterday, she was yeah. miserable. She was. She's yeah. not the kind she says, my back is. Ki she does not want to do this. It is right. really hard for her. Yeah. Uh, it's well, exhausting. Look, we all need her. human interaction of some kind. Not me. Um, this well, is it. Of some kind. Uh, well, I got a level. chat room. Right. I got you guys. Yeah. 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 That's no, a bad no, for me too. Me too. Oh, I yeah. know. This, this thing is harder <laughs> on my wife than it is on me. We both work from home. But by Friday, she's like, let's go. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. We're going out. You know? Yeah. And to me, it's like, eh. Yeah, we could we could order in and just watch the movie. Yeah, you, know. <laughs> you know, I don't care. I mean, I, I go because she wants to. I'm fine with it. It's you know. I think tech tech is full of introverts, right? I, there there are extroverts too, but there are more of us. It makes sense are. because we're people more comfortable <laughs> relating to a machine than other people. Yeah. So it yeah. draws people like us. Uh, it does. You know, that's natural. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can feign extroversion. So. Me too. Wow. Yeah. Same. I can't. <laughs> no, he, he actually cannot. You ever see him at a meetup? I am <laughs> accused of holding up a wall at whatever meetup I'm at yeah. every time. He yeah. gets he gets in a corner and gets surrounded yeah, get by fans. A and, and then he's like, can people oh, just pass me drinks? And I'm oh, just going to say I'm surrounded by wolves, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think that's pretty much. That's why uh, Twit meetups are always interesting. Because yeah. if, if I, so I actually force myself to kind of bring people together. Otherwise, everybody's just yeah. standing. I know, yeah. <laughs> and on the wall looking. Right. Oh, it's yeah. like, come into the conversation. <laughs> yeah, so I'll actually try to draw. Is that an Xbox over the corner? Yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If we had an Xbox set up, it'd be over. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I used to play chess, and it was the same thing. You'd go to a chess tournament, and nobody's talking to anybody. And it's just, yeah. you know. It's, it's been awesome. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we uh, we know that this will be uh, a new way of uh, of presenting. But I'm as I, I, I for one, I'm excited about our future in that regard. I yeah. Do you want to talk about the um, the Adobe Type Manager uh, problem? This was a, this this was a zero this day, the zero day thing. Yeah, I mean, there's not much we can say about it other than that it is being exploited. Actively exploited and, uh, in the wild. There's yeah, a mitigation. So. Microsoft has published a mitigation. The problem is, at some point in Windows 10, they stopped using this Adobe Type Manager DLL and folded right. it into a font render rendering in package. So yep. it's easier to mitigate on older versions of Windows. This bug affects all versions of Windows. Yep. So obviously they're going to release a patch as soon as they can. And this doesn't fall under that thing we talked about earlier where non-critical, you know, optional things are not going to happen. This is critical and not optional. And whenever it is released, uh, you'll get it. Um, but yeah, there are, uh, you know, we'll see if it escalates. But I, I, God, I, you know, I always have a problem with this kind of stuff is terrible in the best of days. But this is like, like people who spam my website. Like you're doing this now? Like really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Really? But it. But on the other hand, this is the worst of us, right? Is the people? Who of course. Right. Yeah. They call it a disaster tunity or something like that. A disaster tunity. <laughs> it's an opportunity wow. and disaster. Okay. We were Steve and I were talking about it. He did. We did a lot of it uh, on it on security now. And um, I asked a question, and Steve did not know. It wasn't clear if this mm -hmm. is Adobe's error or Microsoft's error. It affects Microsoft. Adobe's uh, uh, fonts. Well, the what, yeah, what do they call it? It's, it's not true type. It's the previous. What was it called? The OTF fonts, and um, I don't. It's the renderer for that, and I and it's a, it was a but it's shipping type windows. one. The, the type it one kind of doesn't matter technically which company is to blame. I mean, well, the only reason uh, it does is because who has to fix it, and maybe no, the Microsoft, hold up on, Well, Microsoft is going to have is going to be resp is responsible for, for pushing this. the so fix this, out. The, yeah. This fix will come through Windows Update. Right. Uh, it is part of Windows, so unfortunately... But I'm wondering if the slowdown yeah. is because it's code Adobe created originally and that Microsoft is 
right bundling well, into I, windows and maybe but again you know they it's not like they take a black box put it in windows and don't understand how it works i mean right. uh, ultimately i still have to throw the blame at microsoft it, 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 they are including it with windows there must have been a code review there is a there was a security trustworthy computing initiative that occurred you know 15 years ago where they reviewed every line of code that was in windows and other products i mean uh, it's Microsoft. Oh, I'm not letting them off the hook. I'm just wondering yeah. if that may be what the slowdown is in uh, in fixing it. There is a mitigation. Microsoft published um, a mitigation, a regedit uh, fix, or a batch file you can run. I mean, do you think it's taking a long time? Well, no, I guess I it, like I mean, they just, just discovered it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So I don't, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens, but. The problem with zero days is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're active. They're zero. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 Um, this is a quote from uh, Microsoft um, from their security guidance, um, AVDV 200006. Please note the threat is low for those systems running Windows 10 due to mitigations that were put in place with the first version released in 2015. Please see the mitigation section for details. Microsoft is not aware of any attacks against the Windows 10 platform. The possibility of remote code execution is negligible, and the elevation of privilege is not possible. We do not On recommend that IT specifically or across the board. This is for Windows 10. We do not recommend that IT administrators running Windows 10 implement the workarounds described below. And then, so it's for pre-Windows 10 those workarounds. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, they moved. They 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 uh, they uh, got rid of the uh, DLL, the Adobe Type Manager DLL, in 2010, and. Uh, maybe that that mitigation is part of the reason it's not okay. as much of a problem. Well, that that's good news. Suggests that the pointing the finger at Adobe might, yeah. <laughs> you know, might yeah. Be, yeah. might be accurate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, the pro and you don't have to have those fonts to have it be a problem because, of course, font rendering happens all the time in your in your browser. It happens in your uh, email. So this is uh, we'll cover this in the tip part later, but um, like so many of these types of things, the problem, of course, is people. Opening documents that they get via email, right? right. Um, you know, so I, I I can't remember the exact figure, but I think Microsoft said ninety three percent, some huge percentage of uh, attacks like this, phishing type attacks, all occur, you know, occur through email. I mean, right. that's how you. Yep. You know, Don't open attachments, do, 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 but do, 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 but now that know. people are working from home, you're going to be getting email from your boss mm -hmm. saying, "Here's a spreadsheet I need you to work on." Right. So it's going to be a bigger problem now than ever. Yep. Yeah, it is. Ay, ay, ay. Um, we, the title of, I don't know if you noticed last week's episode, was One Milliard Users. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <Yeah>. That's good. <laughs> uh, a billion users in American parlance, 1,000 mm -hmm. million uh, users. Still a lot. Still a big number. Uh, so before uh, Panos Panay uh, wrote a blog post about Amanda, he posted a video on Instagram in what appears to be 160 by 40 resolution. And it is a quickie look Windows and then it's Windows 10 kind of celebrating Windows 10 and, the, and those billion milliard users. And people who are tech enthusiasts like us or people who watch the show or whatever uh, would have noticed um, real quick couple of you know future UI bits in there the next version of the calendar app there's a, there was a, a new file manager app super quick and and nothing we honestly didn't really know that much about but you know and uh, this isn't this isn't just tied to the fact that there are horrible things going on in the world and maybe we should be thinking about the things that are important but anyone who is excited by this video <laughs> I mean, um, needs to reassess things a little bit because, I mean, this is like the lipstick on a pig theory, you know, where it's like very minor changes to, to, to just the look of a handful of things. And they come very late in the video, unfortunately. But, you know, you get the new icons. If you're watching, you'd see that now. Um, very subtle changes, very subtle changes to the start menu and the tiles. And then um, a couple of app changes. There's a quickie view coming up right now somewhere with the file manager and then the new calendar app, uh, or very soon, sorry. Uh, and that's, you know, that's about it. You know, it's not, we're not talking dramatic changes, but of course <clears throat> that makes sense. They're there. Um, <laughs> you, you know, blink and you miss it. Holy cow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let me go yeah, back yeah. here. 
<laughs> Good luck. Yeah, and then, uh, whoa, that was yeah, it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, whoa. The, the file manager is on screen by itself for less than a second. I mean, it's it's crazy how quick it goes. There it is. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, if you're excited by this kind of thing, I guess God bless you. But I, I just don't. I mean, like, really? And, and of course, what this reminded me of was the Longhorn introduction in 2003. I, I walked into that. Uh, keynote hall in the Los Angeles uh, Convention Center. I watched people push each other out of the way, racing to get down to the front so they could be 10 feet away from Bill Gates as he showed us the future. And it was, you know, going to be awesome. And it was awesome. It looked awesome. Um, it was all a lie and it was fake. But, you know, we didn't find that out until later. But, um, you know, we, we're not getting that moment, right? I mean, uh, we've made some uh, small changes to the icons. Uh, is is pretty much as exciting as it's going to get these days, folks. I mean, you know, that's the. Do you want more? I mean, you just were arguing. Let's not change Windows so much. No, I don't. So I, I'm, I, no, in fact, I applaud this. I mean, yeah. I, I'm just I'm just setting the stage. Like, I think as personal computing has gone mobile, and we spend most of our time on these other devices and those platforms, which are less mature and and have more need of updating. Uh, are, are where all is where all the action is, you know, and so of course Windows is a le is the legacy platform, you know, like the Mac, and um, no, it's exactly right. But I mean, I guess I guess what I was just pointing out was just, you know, there are still enthusiasts who are like, oh, this is a game changer, you know, this is going to be amazing, and it's like <laughs> I, they they changed the shadow on to, a font. I, I have to yeah. admit, I didn't notice anything when I saw that video. Like, yeah, I was yeah. just like, right. it's that minor. You were just you yeah. were just like surprised later to discover there were new things in the video. I was. I was. Well, the, and well then and by the I, way, they're very small. I mean, they're very subtle. And also, aren't they concepts still at this point? They aren't like actual rent. Well, they're, uh, they're I, so, not actual representations of what is definitely yeah, going to be the. Uh, it doesn't. It almost doesn't matter because honestly, um, you know, it's like when you change the icon on the mail or the calendar app. Does right. it change the app? Not really. Um, they have been testing an over uh, an update to the calendar app. It's still exactly the same app. It's, they're just changing right. the look of some of the elements on the screen. I mean, it's not. Yeah. It's lipstick on a pig. You know, it's it's yeah. fine. It's good. I mean, it's it's fine. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but um, it's nothing to get yeah. excited about. No. That's all. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I think that we're at that stage uh, in. The, the you know technology that you're not going to see these big changes. That's why when you get something yes. wild, yes, yes, um, like the folding yeah. phone, for instance, it, everybody right. gets all excited. Oh, by the way, so when, something uh, so big. <laughs> yeah, Microsoft announced Windows 8. As stupid as that was, part of the reason that it was interesting was because it was so crazy, right? I mean, I, I think most of us knew like this doesn't make any sense at all. I can't believe they're doing this. This is awesome, you know, because it was just so stupid. It was like, what are they doing? It's crazy. Um, I think they learned the lesson of that, <laughs> you know, so, you know, that's probably not going to happen again. Thank God. But, um, but I, yeah, I think we're, this is not where the excitement is, you know, um, this is where we get work done. This is, this is the role. I love that. I think that's the, that's the best thing about windows, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I I'm glad there's a pretty new icon. Um, it's not going to change my day to day. <laughs> You know, well, you're it's a, purple. You're you're a pretty new icon, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lovely. I'll just say for the Lovely. record, that notepad icon. icon. That notepad icon. Yeah. No. Terrible. You don't like it? No. That's how I'm going to get Mary Jo to switch to my app. I'm going to give her the icon she wants. There you go. Let me design the icon. <laughs> yes. It'll look okay. like a beer stein with a few <laughs> lines across with it. With a pen sticking out of it. Exactly. Exactly. I always think of you. There's actually. A uh, package manager for the Mac is very widely used called Homebrew. And oh, yeah. uh, when you want to update it, you type brew and then update or brew upgrade. And then when it's done installing something, it does a little it does a little beer emoji to signal <laughs> it's all done. It's been brewed. Nice. It's brewed. Yeah. I thought of you. I when should I say saw that. you've been brewed. You've been brewed. <laughs> That'd be good. Right. Um, Wouldn't make me change to a Mac. But no, still, no, I know. You know. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, if we make you go anywhere, it's Linux. Oh my! God. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> uh, new fast, new fast ring build brings back tablet posture experiment. Did it? This just in. Did it? Did it, did it, did it, did it, it, it literally just. It, by the way, it, it is literally just in. It happened right it before is. we started the show. What is it? What is posture? I so don't... 
back, I, right? I, nobody knows, Leo. It, it's this is Microsoft language. So during the 20H1 development time frame, they tested tested an experiment, as they called it, to to something a set of features called tablet posture. The idea is that you you have a convertible PC of some kind, and you either flip it around so it's a tablet, or you detach the keyboard. And it goes into this thing that they're saying is not tablet mode, which I don't quite understand. But it's basically an evolution of the desktop for tablet form factor where there are just some subtle changes, which, by the way, Mary Jo would never notice. Um, the taskbar icons are spread out a little bit so they're easier to hit with your fingers that might be on the edge of the screen. You know, that kind of thing. You have a, the virtual keyboard button comes up on the taskbar, et cetera. So they, they tested it. Only on some people, which is I'm always irritating with the Insider program. <laughs> and then they took it away. And now it's back. And it, it, they're testing it again for some future version of Windows, maybe 20H2, maybe later. Once again, you may or may not get it. It's only going out to some insiders because they can't stop doing this. I don't know why they do this. But if you're in the fast ring, you may get to test this new tablet posture thing again. And you so, may not. You may not. <laughs> yep. And you may Obviously not care. <laughs> exactly. You it's may not even notice it. Subtle. It is. It's pretty subtle. Pretty damn yeah. subtle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. What is uh, what is the word posture mean in this context? Not well. Uh, not how it's, you, not you, how upright you are. No, it's not. No, right. It, it senses if you're leaning back. <laughs> so it, it's back. not your. It's not your posture. It's the the posture of the device. So it's the leaning. You, it's how you, much the device leans. No, no. You have a convertible, and it can switch form factors. So in other words, you you flip the screen back so that it's like a thick tablet. Okay, that's a so a two in one it. has a tent posture and mm -hmm. a flipped posture. Okay, oh, yeah. So good. it's not clamshell. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Or you could, if it's like a Surface Pro, where you can detach the screen. Today, that triggers what they call tablet mode. They're saying this is not tablet mode, so it's unclear if this replaces tablet mode. If it sits next to tablet mode. It, I don't know. I, it's, I don't know because I don't think I don't think they've communicated that. But uh, but yes, it would it would be triggered by some of the same posture changes <laughs> that uh, today trigger tablet mode. So. Yeah. You know what my guess is on that, by the way, I think so few people actually use their PCs in any other way than than clamshell that they're just trying to make it so it's it's just a unified look and feel. I agree, and I, I. But I will say, in a weird coincidence, um, if if you are interested, anyone listening or whatever, in Neo or Duo, and mm -hmm. you're curious about this two screen experience and how might that impact things, the best way to kind of get a feel for that today is to use tablet mode, and it, yeah. because it kind of puts it into this simplified mode that very much resembles those UIs. You're going to use the, um, you know, the. Or I forgot the name of it. The thing where you um, stack the windows side by side. What is that called? <laughs> um, snap. 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 Thank you. Jeez, I just lost my mind. <laughs> like, um, yeah. Which very closely <laughs> resembles the two screen mode, like a dual screen experience, right? Yeah. right? So you can have two apps side by side on the screen. So, you know, if you're if you're curious about that kind of user experience, mm -hmm. it's actually tablet mode is really close to it. Really close. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 And, and it seems like they're getting rid maybe maybe that maybe this is tied to that. They they don't want to have tablet mode on a traditional Windows 10 desktop experience because it's that's floating windows and big screens and everything. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. they want to have these uh, mm -hmm. uh, the tablet mode type experience. They're not going to call it that, but right. on a, on one a dual screen, screen, one screen app, right? Like an yeah. app has to fill the screen. Yep. Yeah. That might yeah, that, that might be related. I'm just guessing, yeah, but. Uh, Edge also like Chrome on pause. Yeah, right. So I, I, Google had previously announced they were going to skip Chromium 81. And at that time, Microsoft said they would have to do that for Edge as well because it's obviously based on, on Chromium. Um, and they, I think what they did was basically pause stable, if I remember correctly, when Microsoft made their announcement. But then just a few days ago, Google said, you know, actually, we're going to skip 82 as well. And they have they have a whole schedule that they use. I, th I believe they're still throwing out Canary builds, both for a, a Chromium and Edge. And Dev is, I don't know, they're going to have to change up how Dev and Beta work. But 
as of today, I don't think Microsoft has addressed the 82 part, version 82 part, but um, Chromium is going to go from 80, I guess, to 83 at some point. And I suspect that Edge will have to do the same. Mm. So, does this matter? Uh, yeah, actually it does, because in Edge's case... Edge is still brand new. It still doesn't have features. We're still waiting to have certain things come in. They just released two great status updates about all the things they plan to do. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that stuff is going to take longer now, frankly. So mm -hmm. if you were looking forward to such things as the ability to remove the Bing bar from the new tab screen or have your own pictures on the new tab screen or sync your extensions or whatever... Um, that stuff's probably not going to happen on the original schedule. It's probably going to be delayed. But those are months. things that Microsoft's doing unilaterally. They're not relying on Chromium. But they're following the Chromium release schedule. So, so they can't, it, they don't want to update. Well, okay, I, I suppose Edge could. They could just update their own keep Edge Keep it on the stuff. same version of yeah. Chromium. And yeah, I guess they could do that. Um, but they they haven't been. I mean, so far, that might be. as they update uh, Edge, they it's based on whatever the new right. version of you know, It might it be logistically uh, challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I suppose they could, I guess. Uh, teams, very hot these days. Yeah. Sometimes too hot. Very. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 44 million daily active that's, users. That's really, you know... Uh, it's a silver lining for Microsoft because they've been dying to get people to use Teams. Yeah. In November, it was 20 million. Wow. Right. Even right. a week ago, it was 32 million. Wow. So it went from 32 million to 44 million in one week. That, that to me is amazing because they had briefed us about the Teams announcement. They said the number's 32. And then yep. on the night before it went live, they said, hey, uh, sorry for the last minute change. It's actually 44 now. <laughs> it's like, what? yikes. Yeah. That's, um, that's, that's incredible. Why? Because yeah. so there are a lot of choices out there. Um, is it because they're giving it away? Is it because people? You know what? It's because people may already have it installed because they have Office. Is yeah, that what you that's think? That's part of it. Yeah, that's part of it. So they say, sure. "Oh, we've got this thing that we could uh, do but remote now they're working." Using it. It. Yes. Yeah, it's already just, here. It's already here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So we we had already uh, said on uh, Slack a long time ago when HipChat went away. Right. Um, and so we're just using Slack. But, I, yeah, I think if we didn't have a solution, it would be Teams. Well, all these things, um, Skype and uh, what's the big one that everyone's talking? Zoom uh, have seen an incredible surge in oh, usage yeah. because oh, yeah. we have this need. We're all in remote right. locations and we have to communicate. Right. Yep. Yep. We don't know what the comparable number is for daily active users for Slack because they aren't releasing that number. They said 12 million last fall and when you ask them now they say they give you all these other numbers but they won't give you daily active users they won't get the same uptake uh, teams does because no, you have to then go won't. seek slack install it there's yeah, a free yeah. tier but it's i don't know i don't think yeah. they've done what microsoft has done is which is say it's all free for the next few months um right so i don't I think, think they did gonna, give some away free they? right okay. i think okay. they did yeah I mean, but you know microsoft i i the way that they bundled this thing into Office 365 totally makes sense, regardless of what's happening in the world today. And then, of course, because of what is happening in the world today, uh, they're going to benefit from the fact that people just have this as part of their subscription. They don't maybe ever use it, and now they have to. Um, hopefully, they'll be pleasantly surprised. And, um, yeah. you know, and, and re again, going to the back to that Jared uh, Spataro thing, um, you know, once the, uh, people use this as part of their workflow and they use it to collaborate, maybe it sticks. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure that's Microsoft's hope. So, yeah. we'll They're see. also adding a bunch of um, new features that they talked about this week that a, lo a lot of these are things people really want. Like the ability to pop out a chat into the separate window. The raise yeah. hand feature when you have a big meeting and you want to say something but you can't get your point across. I need that for Windows right. Weekly. Raise hand right. features. Um, <laughs> what do you mean, Mary Jo? Leo, let's talk about something without Mary Jo for a second. <laughs> let's talk about Xbox again. <laughs> yeah, so they, they got a lot of really no, good features are. coming, yeah. which is good. A lot of them are kind of accessibility related, too, which is really interesting. Um, and uh, not because they're specifically for accessibility, but like that hand raise thing is a good example of this. You know, we're just talking about people not comfortable talking in front of people. I mean, there are people in meetings who are uncomfortable interrupting and it, it's kind of a nice visual way to say that you have something to say or want to ask a question 
for people who have accessibility needs. It's kind of a nice oh, cool. uh, thing for that as yeah, well. And then Teams yeah. has all these amazing uh, live captioning, uh, inline translation, transcript search you can do after the fact where you can go like search, you can use text to search what people said during a meeting. Wow, and that's so nice. It, I think when you, yeah, I mean, and when, and again, I keep referencing the, the Jared Spataro thing, which I, I'm not even sure if it's public, but the thing they had provided to us, I, I find it really interesting because I think when you implement this kind of stuff, even if we go back to a situation where a bunch of us are sitting in a room having a meeting, you might want to record it with teams so you can go back and do that transcription search if you were there or people who weren't in the meeting can go back and see the meeting later. Um, it's possible that this is sticky. Like this stuff might, you know, once the world goes back to whatever normal looks like, you know, six months down the road, whatever, um, we might literally have changed the way that we do things. And, and it's interesting that, you know, it just works out this way. Teams is really well situated to take advantage of that. Makes me want to use it now. Yeah. You're a good team uh, sales. It was person. good. It's good timing. You know, or, you know, it, yeah. it, this is the problem. Uh, is that there is a speed bump to shift changing to another platform. Once you've got a platform, you, yeah. you, uh, like Slack or something, you're going to be in there. And that's it's. it would be very hard for me to, even if I looked at Teams and said, boy, I, these are 12 features I really would like. And you yep. just described a number of them. Sure. Um, we use Zoom and Slack. Right. And it's going to be very hard to shift away from that. Right. Um, but apparently uh, there were a lot of companies that hadn't yet settled on uh, yeah, but that's a, gonna anything be, you know, like this. Th this has always been true with Office 365. You know, one of the issues there in Microsoft 365 now is the offering is so dense, you know, right. that people yeah. people who are workers probably approach it mostly with the things they're familiar with. Yeah, I'm going to use Word to write stories. I'm going to use Excel, Excel yeah. you know. But, yep. you know, there's like booking software in there and there's, like, there's all this stuff. If you go and look at what's available to you as an Office 365 or Microsoft 365 user, it's an, there's an astonishing range of apps available, and Teams is one of those things. And so uh, it's been kind of forced on us because of the current situation, but, you know, how neat. I mean, what and maybe this uh, triggers some other, you know, what else is going on in here that we could use that would, you know, maybe transform the way we do things. So, you know, we'll see. <laughs> there's also um, on Monday coming up, the 30th, we think this is when Microsoft's going to announce Microsoft 365 consumer subscriptions. Right. Um, and there's been a lot of talk about the, the, uh, that whether or not they're also going to announce this thing that's been codenamed Teams for Life, which is a version of Teams for prosumers. You know, use it at home, but it's not, it's not just for you using with your kids. It's more like you using it at home when you're working at home in normal circumstances. And, and like kind now. of possibly a replacement for Skype, right? Like, is that the yeah, long-term goal? Right? I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if their long-term goal is replacing Skype consumer with this, but I would think yeah. somewhere down the line, it should be their long-term right. posturing. Cause otherwise, Teams how do you explain when do you use one or the other? Right. Right. Yeah. Whiskey right. Bravo aptly named in our chat room says mm -hmm. his company's using teams to have virtual happy hours, a hundred plus attendees all drinking. Right. Nice. <laughs> I think though, these are the, we're going to get used to these kind of, I mean, that same odd on the face of it, but I bet we get used to this kind of socializing. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And maybe this will be a nice little step ladder for those folks to actually socialize someday. <laughs> someday. <laughs> You know, you know, we could do this, but I know. Uh, hold on, I don't don't back up yet. But we're in the same room. I'm, it's just an idea. <laughs> it's kind of, I mean, what? Uh, you know, uh, what? Are, were you looking at somebody just sitting there drinking? Or, or, or is there? I don't know. I can't imagine. <laughs> you're all talking at once. No, you're probably just chatting. Yeah, you like, can't have we side with, conversations with these technologies. Right, right. That's the no, only I, drawback. No, I do this with my family because my family's spread out, and yeah. we we do Skypes. You know, and we're all me and my sisters are all drinking wine or beer or whatever. I think that's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. that. I was thinking along the lines of it's a family event, so obviously I'm drinking um, <laughs> straight whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mom's coming over. Can I have some good stuff? Yeah, pollution's way down. The right. uh, the uh, canals of Venice running clear for the first time in years. Wow. Yep. 
Yeah. Humans are it turns really out, uh, the problem was us. Yeah. Humans are really the problem. Yeah. Who knew? I guess we all surprising. <laughs> this is uh, something very innocuous. It sits on my desktop all the time. Uh, there are big banks that might have hundreds of them spread throughout their enterprise. They exist on all seven continents, even on Antarctica. This is a honeypot, which is a really... So honeypots are a great idea, and, and, and people have used them against hackers for years. Putting something that looks valuable on the network to attract you know, those hackers... And then it notifies you the minute they attack it. That's what this is. But this is so easy to set up, so easy to configure, and can assume so many identities. It's really the best way to do honeypots. We call it the Thinkst Canary. It comes from Thinkst. Uh, they've been in the security game for a long time, training companies, militaries, governments, how to break into networks. They know what hackers do. They know how they think. And that's inspired them to build the Canary. Data breaches are a big problem, obviously. I don't even have to tell you that. The thing that you should remember is in many cases, hackers are in the network for many, many months. On average, it takes 191 days, more than six months for a company to realize there's been a data breach. So you're going along just ignorant about it, wandering around, collecting data, watching everything happening. It's creepy. But a canary is the best way... And it's well-named. It's the canary in the coal mine. To let you know if something's going on. And they're not expensive. Uh, they're designed to be installed, configured, and forgotten in minutes. A canary can be almost anything you want. My canary here is uh, set up to be a Synology NAS with a Synology page. It even has a Synology MAC address. It looks exactly like Synology. And one of the reasons it has a login page is I can learn something from the uh, email address, for instance, the hacker uses as a login that tells me, oh, they, they think they know other people in the company. They think they know what the passwords are. It's very, very valuable. You don't get a ton of alerts. You get just the right number of alerts, and you can get them via email or text message. There's a console. You can have it hooked up to Slack or Teams. There's webhooks. There's syslog. They have a full API. So the alerts are very clear, very direct. They tell you what happened, what, you know, what was going on. And so you can act on it. You're not going to be inundated. You'll get the information you need. Two things all companies know when it comes to data breaches. Ha hackers take the path of least resistance. Your staff, they send them phishing emails. They get into the system through your staff. The canary watches. And then the other thing companies know or should know is it takes a long time often to realize somebody's been browsing through your network. The canary can be anything from a Windows server uh, to a SCADA device. They could be a Siemens centrifuge if you want. I mean, it's it's really incredible. And it, it can be set up, you could sit to say it's a Christmas tree lit up with every service, or you could be, and this is what we did with the Synology, judicious and turn on a couple of services. You want to make it look real. The other thing you could do with your canary is gen generate canary tokens, documents, PDFs, Word docs, Excel docs, where well, that's what they look like anyway. We have an Excel doc somewhere on, somewhere on a network that says payroll information. If a hacker tries to open that doc, I will get a notification. Somebody's trying to get in there. It's so great. You can enroll your canary in Active Directory. The minute hackers investigate, they give themselves away, you'll be notified instantly. Canaries are everywhere, and you're going to want one on your network. Go to canary.tools slash twit, C-A-N-A-R-Y dot tools slash twit. Use the code twit in the How Did You Hear About Us box. We've got a really good offer. Uh, you can get as many canaries as you need. Some companies have hundreds. Some just have a, a few scattered around. But as an example... Uh, $7,500 a year gets you five canaries. You also get your own hosted console upgrade support and maintenance for a year. If you use the code TWIT in the How Did You Hear About Us box, you'll get 10% off forever. So you're going to save a lot of money for life. And they do have a two-month money-back guarantee, so there's really no risk. Full refund anytime in the first two months. So get it and try it. See how it works. The best thing about this canary is I don't hear from it. And when I do, I know I got a problem and I need to act on it. It's only pinged us once. One of our hosts put a uh, another NAS, I think it was a My Passport, one of the Western Digital Devices, on our network. And it was going out scanning the network for other devices. Not sure why, maybe for backup purposes, whatever. But I got a ping. It says something scanned me. 
It's at 10.0.1.28 or whatever. And we, we said, what's that? We found the device, immediately disconnected it. So uh, that was a great feeling. Because normally, everything's fine. You don't hear from your canary. But when you do, you'll know you need to act. Canary.tools slash twit. And please put twit in the how did you hear about us box. You'll get 10% off and they'll know you saw it here. And I know a lot of Security Now listeners use the canaries. But there are a lot of sysadmins, sysos, and others who listen to Windows Weekly who I think should really be thinking about a canary now more than ever. Canary.tools slash twit. Don't forget that offer code twit. All right. Back to work, Paul and Mary Jo. Beer time is over. <laughs> Beer time Not has yet. only just begun, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardest thing for a lot of people working at home is the refrigerator's right there. I know. Yeah. We're used to it, but other people are not. It's hard. <laughs> Snacks, yep. you know. They're right there. They're right there. Hey, you know, getting up to go to the refrigerator is still movement and it's still okay. <laughs> you know? It's you should, exercise. They make, yeah. I, I was tempted to get this when I was on keto. They make a uh, lock box that has a timer. Yeah. So you can put something in it that you really like. And when you open it, and then the timer, it won't let you have it for a, a set period of time. You can set it like another 72 hours. Right. It'll be locked. I think Should that's what all we, that. That terrible food that no one wants in there. <laughs> <laughs> then you can't have it. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I try to eat healthy, but it's in the lockbox. <laughs> it's, lo it's all locked up. <laughs> so how is Azure holding up? Because I would imagine, uh, has Microsoft talked about all the additional traffic they're getting or is that? Um, they haven't really talked about that in terms of numbers or anything measurable. But there, there are a couple of areas of concern. And one of them for Azure is capacity. That was a concern last fall in the U.S. That uh, I don't know if you remember, we've talked about this on Windows Weekly, that some people were trying to spin up virtual machines on Azure in U.S. East, which is one of Microsoft's biggest regions. And they were getting messages that, they, that the cloud was out of room, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Cloudy. That sounds crazy. It's too cloudy. Um, so this week, people in Europe have been having the same issue, especially in uh, Western Europe and Northern Europe. People have been hitting uh, capacity problems with Azure and Microsoft is acknowledging this is happening. They're saying we have to prioritize and decide on which, which kind of traffic we're gonna give top billing to. And of course, emergency personnel, hospitals and all that get top billing. So um, quite a few users yesterday were tweeting about hitting VM and other kinds of uh, capacity issues on Azure in Europe. Uh, today, I got a message from someone who showed me another whole thread going on about people being unable to uh, create SQL Server database instances on Azure all over the world, not just in Europe or the US, but in Africa and other countries and continents. Um, so yeah, it's definitely an issue. They're hitting capacity. Um, they're not telling us, you know, how, how far, like how far along they are in trying to remedy this or when they think this will be fixed because I don't think they know. But yeah, I, I also was trying to see if AWS was hitting capacity issues just by doing some searches on Twitter. And I am not seeing that happen with AWS at this point. I mean, so that's, this totally makes sense. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, it does the, make sense. the point yeah. of cloud computing is that you as an organization don't have to have infrastructure on hand that you only right. use sometimes. Once in a while, but right? The, the, yeah. the, the, the converse of that is the cloud computing provider does have to have that infrastructure yes, on hand do. all the time. <laughs> I and know. if everyone right. is hitting uh, it at, you know, ever higher rates, at I mean, the same time. yeah, that capacity yeah. Could, could go away. Sure. Great. And in terms of um, Office 365, Microsoft has also put out a message saying, you know, we're going to have to also kind of have a priority list here. And this week, if you are an admin in your Office 365 tenant, you got a message saying, here are some of the, quote, non-essential services that we're going to start throttling on a temporary basis uh, right. just to free up performance for the entire Office 365 community. So there were things around OneNote, you know, like OneNote and Teams will be read only for commercial tenants. Whoa, except whoa, for whoa, EDU. whoa. I mean, your critical is my non-critical and vice versa. I know. I mean. That's right. I know. <clears throat> I know. 
SharePoint, there were a couple things like reduced video resolution, yeah. Microsoft Stream. Um, the people timeline has been disabled for newly <laughs> uploaded videos, Paul. <laughs> Yeah, yep. so that you know, this could continue. They could they could have to throttle additional services. Right now, as you can see, they're not throttling things like Exchange or Teams. Um, but yeah, this is this is definitely something that is a, again, it's it's not surprising, but it's also kind of surprising yep. because it's the first time people have had to encounter this. Right. It's yeah, because I mean. I don't know how much headroom they provided, uh, but I'm know, sure they right? overbuilt a little bit. You would hope. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, when I, I'm when sure I, did, but. I, yeah, but when yeah. I asked Jason Zander in the fall about reports coming out of the U.S. about t about um, Azure hitting capacity constraints, all he would say to me every time I asked the question in all different ways, all he would say is, "Mary Jo, we're always adding capacity," and I'm like, "Yeah, but what about blah blah blah, Mary Jo, we're always adding capacity." I'm like. <laughs> But when are you going to have yeah. enough capacity? Oh, never. There, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> never. There is a yeah, limited, so, I mean, I never even thought about yeah. this, but there is a limited number of network operations centers you can have bef right. before right. <laughs> you've used up everything. I, I used to play a game called yeah. Paperclips. I don't know if you've ever seen this game, mm -hmm. but it's an artificial intelligence game where you create an artificial intelligence to build paperclips. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. eventually, not only does it, eat up the entire earth and turn it into paper clips but the known universe and at that point the game is over you won where you've turned literally everything into paper clips in fact okay. the only way you win the game is eventually by dismantling bit by bit the ai to turn so, it into wow. paper clips <laughs> so once if microsoft reaches 100 percent capacity that means all life has ceased to yeah. exist but azure <laughs> is humming along is 100 percent 100 percent yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, there's only so many uh, uh, places. I think Asimov solved this problem um, <laughs> from happening, but. What was it? What did he say? Well, it's the rules of robotics. Oh. You know, you got to make sure that you don't right. harm humanity. Right. You know, the, the game's based on, uh, I think, Nick Bostrom's kind of thought experiment about an AI gone wild. If you don't right. give AI constraints, like <clears throat> if you only say, well, success is optimizing paperclip production. <laughs> the, right. the AI Period. doesn't know <laughs> yeah. without any other yeah. context. Yeah, that doesn't yes. know yeah. that that doesn't mean eating all life and exactly. material in the world in the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's but it's you know it's in, it's really interesting because we don't. I'm always blown away. I mean, I'm not. I am. I'm sure you're not either. Unaware of, you know, Facebook's had the same thing uh, going on, and I've always been blown away by the the scale of yeah. of fa two and a half billion monthly active users. On Facebook right. or Google, Google searches. How many millions of searches a second? And the scale just always blows me away that we even can, we even have the means and the, and the know-how to do that is it's amazing. True. I know. Well, we got a it's... lot of farmland in this country that's not going to be used for farmland. <laughs> just saying. Uh, uh, well, then in electricity, yeah. you got to generate sure. power for all of this stuff. Yep. What about all those cruise ships? Come on, we could do something. Yeah, we can get rid of them. <laughs> Mobile, well, they, they could become mobile data centers. We'll just move them where they're needed. It's brilliant, Paul. Huh? You're brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> mobile data centers. Yep. Um, Azure, we talked about that. Running out of room two teams, of course, has been, again, yep. facing hardship, but with 44 million users. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Microsoft, how is this related? Kills Inspire... 2020. So What's Inspire that? is uh, Microsoft's annual partner conference. Oh, it's a conference. Uh, it's held in the place that Stephen King picked for the end of the world, Las Vegas, and <laughs> is no longer open to the press. Yeah. Um, but Are obviously, they still it was do it? Uh, scheduled for July. Oh, maybe they think so. They've better. canceled it. They are looking oh. into doing some remote virtual something, something, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. No surprise there. No, I guess not. Yeah. No. Um, <clears throat> we just got today the new uh, iPad and uh, the iPad Pro. Mike is doing his review of it as we speak. We yep. also, um, all of us uh, who have iPad Pro, no, I guess all iPads, got the mm -hmm. new uh, iOS 13.4, which adds trackpad and mouse. Yes. And who was it? It was no, no one less than, I think, uh, Stephen Sanofsky who said... Uh, 
There is no one less than Stephen. <laughs> let me. <laughs> let me. <laughs> oh, woo! Okay, a number uh, of wow. people have pointed out wow. this could be a threat to surface. Right. Right. So I don't think it is. I, it's a. I, 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 rather than spend a thousand dollars on a new iPad Pro and wait for their keyboard trackpad combo to show up, I, I figured the first thing I would do is just test it on my existing. Uh, iPad. I have a an Apple keyboard. I have an Apple trackpad. You can use a magic trackpad. See how it works. Can, yeah. Couldn't find the Apple trackpad for some reason. It's in here in this mess somewhere. But I did try it with a Microsoft mouse. I got to tell you, it's awesome. <laughs> like it's. Oh really? It's awesome. Yeah, oh, it's awesome! Wow. And uh, now uh, the 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 setup I'm describing is ludicrous. It's like a yeah, it's too an iPad clunky. with a keyboard. Yeah. Uh, not a, uh, I'm sorry, like a cover that uses a stand and a separate keyboard mouse. No, no one should ever do something like that. But you know, with these keyboard covers that they're going to have, like we have on Surface, um, yeah, this is a real, this is the real deal. And and Apple, especially, but Google too, have been talking about this post PC world for a long time, and this notion uh, that most people get most of their stuff done on a phone, but occasionally they need a bigger screen and a keyboard. Um, Google has a Chromecast for that kind of device, uh, and Apple has an iPad, but the iPad has always been very constrained by. Terrible multitasking, you know, gesture-based multitasking, um, a keyboard but not a trackpad. You know, it's just uh, really, really bad. And um, when you get have, this, this cantilevered keyboard won't be out till May. The magic right, keyboard. Right, so, but that is the same keyboard as uh, as on the laptop. It's not a. Right. It's not a yeah, fabric it's a keyboard. With it's a, a real yep. keyboard. That's right. Real trackpad. The cantilevered yep. design. Uh, which is a little bit, it's kind of like the Surface Studio uh, in a yeah. very small scale, is really intriguing. It's got a hinge with a power cable coming out of the hinge right, right there. It, yes. This is a laptop. So it, it's also at a laptop price. It's $349 for the keyboard. Yeah, but you know what? So you can buy an iPad for as little as $300. You know there are going to be uh, third-party keyboard trackpads from all kinds well, of Well, any companies. Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad will work. So. Yeah, but I mean, but they'll make or the mouse. covers that have both integrated, whatever. Right. Yeah, Logitech. So, already, yeah. honestly, like a, a low end iPad with that kind of a cover is not going to be any more than an, a Chromebook, any more than a cheap PC. Maybe 500. And then yeah. a high end one with an iPad Pro with a nice thing like you were describing, 1200 bucks, uh, 1300 bucks. I mean, that's how much you spend on a nice laptop. It's a laptop so, price. Yeah, it's fine. It works great. And, you know, again, not lapable, though, is it? Though? Well, no, it might it, be. No. It doesn't matter. That's it's going to be a little really top-heavy. But I know I've <laughs> talked to some people who, of, who've used it in their yes, labs. So. We're, we're worrying about the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> the point is, no, we're not. This, this does the job <laughs> that most people need. That's and the it's, Here's my issue is software. They still haven't quite got the iPad software to the level of... Uh, I'm telling you though, you got to try this with the mouse. It is, yeah. it works amazingly well. Well, I've well. done some really interesting things with the mouse. For yeah, instance, it's really neat. The pointer isn't an, isn't an arrow. It's uh, it's your finger, but when it hovers over a button, it occupies the the whole button lights up. So it's, it's like a little blob clear. that kind of adapts. Yeah. but it also has like it has momentum, and it has like a it's almost like a predictive thing going on. Oh boy, um, which works really really well, and it is, I, I like I. I can complain forever. It took them 10 years, whatever. I, I, I cannot believe, like this thing already, just on this stupid little thing I'm testing on, it works great. And I think um, as we get integrated solutions, it's going to put it over the top. Like I, 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 I this is so well done. Um, well, I, I, and you know, it's yeah, a problem. it's interesting, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? I, I don't it's know really what else interesting. to say. Well, so yeah. this was Microsoft's problem was they didn't have a, they had Windows. They didn't have a mobile device platform anymore. Right. So if they were going to put touch and tablet uh, on computers, they had to do it through Windows. That's why we had, thank you, Stephen Sanofsky, Windows 8, uh, <laughs> yeah. which was just this horrible kind of beast with two backs. They've solved it, I think, in <laughs> Windows 10. It's not quite so... <laughs> Is that the right term? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. It's a little Shakespearean. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, uh, but Windows 10 is not so bad. They've hidden away the tablet stuff. But Apple had that opportunity. They and we've talked about this many times. But they yeah, had yeah, yeah. they had two roads. They had the, and and for a long time, I think a lot of us Apple users saying, "Why aren't you putting Touch on the Mac? We want Touch on the Mac." And they held their ground. They said, "No." The yeah. Mac, and I think now it's very clear the Mac is going to be the truck. It's going to be the 
programmers right. and it's the workstation workstation yeah. and that's the thing i know people like especially you know in the windows community people freak out about stuff like this like you know windows it doesn't suddenly disappear because of something like this but in, in a world in which mainstream users are you know like i said getting most of what they need to get done on a on a phone and this kind of solves that problem for the second device there are always going to be people who need full excel and all the craziness that comes along with that or they need full adobe photoshop because they're graphic designers or they need engineering software because they're scientists or they're programmers and they need visual studio or xcode or whatever it is uh or they're you know high-end gamers and they love that kind of stuff whatever of course it, it that stuff's still there but for the people who occasionally need a slightly bigger screen and a real keyboard to compose a, a letter or a document of some kind this kind of solves the problem i think it's be very interesting but again, they I, yeah. have to have this software. Hasn't Microsoft said that they're going to start uh, building in capabilities for the trackpad with uh, Office for the iPad? I think they. I have. don't know if they have or not, but they they will. They they always yeah. they fully support everything that Apple does with multitasking and all that stuff on iOS slash iPad OS. Um, they they absolutely will. Yeah, they they will. And the iPad versions of those apps, you know, Word, Excel, etc., are very good. They're very good, and they do meet the needs that most people have. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. So, interesting. That's all. Well, I'm surprised to hear you say this. I, I you know, that, But I kind well, of look, agree. I, I think it's very interesting. This is a better device, yeah. assuming there's a viable keyboard trackpad cover, you know, than a Surface Go, than any kind of low-end anything that's in the PC space. It is such a simpler device. It gets incredible battery life. The app selection is incredible. And now it does all those productivity things in a non-constrained way. It is it is literally, it's a game changer. It, it is. It just is. I don't know how, I don't know how wow. micro, I don't think it does. It's, it's, it's going to depend on getting this. software that is productivity, more productivity focused, better power, powerful tools on there. This is the bad thing that Apple did was made it made the standard for iOS apps, 99 cents, five bucks. And nobody's going to make a real productivity app for that price. But there are well, a few already, that, you know. Well, for example, Microsoft Word and those apps. Yeah, those are, are free. They're not selling those for five bucks. Yeah. You need an Office 365 right. subscription right. to get the most out of those apps, and and that's that's a fine model. You know, it's fine. I don't I don't use them, but I suspect that Apple Pages and things like Google Docs all work pretty well on the iPad as well. Uh, I'm I'm excited. I, yeah, uh, it's I just something to be aware of, yeah. and I would really the, love to have. I've, and I've wanted for some time. This could, because partly because this is such a powerful processor. Uh, yeah. The cameras are on the back where they belong. They're kind. I mean, this there's just right. a lot. I feel like this there a lot that the potential is huge on this thing. Yeah. And it's been, yeah. but it's been a gradual progression, and it hasn't kept up with its potential. They, they have a range now, and so there's uh, iPad Mini and the regular. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like a 10.2 inch iPad. This iPad Air for some reason, and then they have the Pro models. And so it, it kind of works out like the PC space does, where you go from low end to high end and different size choices. And there's uh, there'll be the first party uh, accessories, but there's going to be a whole. It, it's Apple, so there's a tremendous third party ecosystem of um, peripherals you're going to get that will do that keyboard trackpad combo with the cover and all that. And whatever you want, you know, it's going to be there. And you know, look, I, I love Surface. I prefer a PC. I need a PC. I'm not. It's not like I can change to an iPad anytime soon or ever. But Let's face it, the one thing we don't see in the PC space, Surface or otherwise, is that incredible ecosystem of like covers and different keyboard types and stuff. The, the types of things I thought we'd see to some degree with Surface has never materialized. But Apple releases something like this and there's like 1,100 of them in like in a few weeks. Like it's crazy. So there's going to be tremendous choice. Yeah. Including Mary Jo, something that will be lappable. <laughs> Well, interestingly, though, Mary Jo, you didn't, go, you didn't or op, opt for a Surface <laughs> e tablet either. You you went with the laptop. Right. Because that was lappable. Right. Yeah, Surface tablet's not right. lappable, but lap laptop is. And for, for those people, there's still a Mac, you know, they updated the MacBook Air. It's going to be a very nice, yeah. powerful machine that's very similar, yeah. really, to the Surface laptop in many respects. It's going to be really interesting a year from now to look back and see how the MacBook Air did versus iPad Pro. Classically, their best-selling computer always has yep. been. Yep. Uh, they invented the Ultrabook, really. But come on, I mean, aside yeah. from the fact that school might not be happening in the fall, if you're going to school this fall, I mean, <laughs> Which would you want? Um, no, I agree. Would, I mean, I agree. If uh, the software, you, if the software you need is on the iPad, it's it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and that's going to be the question. But I have a feeling you're right, Paul. That people are going to jump on this. 
I think so. Yeah, yeah. it's really interesting. Uh, and I, I feel like uh, it wasn't Apple's strategy wasn't clear, but they knew all along where they were headed, that this was what they wanted to do. And this is where ARM belongs, or an ARM yeah. platform belongs, is on something like this, not this on a desktop. This makes way more sense than like an ARM-based Mac. ARM-based Mac OS sense. never made sense to me. I don't even understand. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't quite get well, the just, point of that. I mean, it was to get out from under Intel. Yeah, but I, I, if for I, where the Mac makes sense are in these high-end applications, right. design, graphics, uh, programming. Obviously, you need an Intel. Pro you, that's a workstation. You know, you need kind of a, you know, that big classic kind right. of design. Right. Uh, but for the ninety-something percent, the other people, I think this is going to do it. I can't wait. I'm, you know, my I, I, I ordered the new iPad Pro. Although you don't need it to do this, as you point out. No. But I can't wait to get that keyboard. I think that's going to be the really interesting. Uh, yeah, very curious yeah. about the integrated one. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about Xbox. Sorry, Mary. Finally. <laughs> actually, we have very little Xbox news. <laughs> or, actually, none of this is Xbox. It's just it's really gaming news. Um, so Microsoft released the first preview of xCloud, I want to say last December or maybe November. Um, I have often said, you know, one of the problems with it, it's it's only on, well, actually it's on iPad now, but in the beginning it was only on Android phones. Um, ideally what this would be is on the PC where you could get on a big screen. And it looks like Microsoft is now testing this internally. There have been some leaked shots of what it looks like on a big screen, like on a PC. Um, so presumably sometime in the next few weeks we'll be able to test it. People are in the program. We'll finally be able to get that and uh, test it on a on a big screen, which is what I'm waiting for. I cannot wait to try this thing on a, I don't know what to call it, a, a real screen or whatever. And so far, I the latency, actually... of course, now this might be yep. moot. <laughs> but up till yeah. now, the latency was fine, right? It was usable? That's right. Yeah, surprisingly good. Yeah. See what see what happens yep. now. Maybe that's one of the essential services. I'm really sensitive to this kind of thing, too, because I actually don't play the most recent Call of Duty game because the latency in that game, really? just playing it normally on the con is terrible. Really? It's terrible. I can't do it. It's awful. And every time I think, well, maybe it's just me, I go back to the Black Ops 4, the previous game, and that game works wonderfully. It's perfect. Hmm. Uh, completely different code, obviously. They screwed something up. It's, it's terrible. It's so the, really the, network, the that. network gaming latency is the problem. Yeah, the it's time. a huge problem. Wow. So obviously these days, that's going to be a problem. So we'll see. We'll see that's interesting. Problem. Is it? Uh, it's running on their servers, so maybe their servers are uh, loaded yeah, or it something. Is. It's an, yeah, that's, let's talk about non-critical uh, Azure services. I could imagine this being impacted for yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, wow, this story is kind of a blockbuster. <laughs> this next one. Yeah, sort of. Um, so <laughs> I got I got this email from HP. I think it was, and I was like, really? But apparently, um, HP, uh, my, uh, no HP. Yeah, Microsoft and Valve have teamed up on a new generation uh, Windows Mixed Reality headset for specifically for Steam's Half-Life Alex game, which launched this past week. That's that new uh, VR only. Um, yeah, that's supposed to be uh, great. I love Half-Life, and yeah, I imagine and I can't stand VR, but I might have to. Oh man, being in that Half-Life world when that face sucker hits you. I know. Oh I know. man. <laughs> well, just the whole atmospheric thing, just to have yeah. the um, the world around you with all the beeps and boops and you know whatever. I think the, the the spatial audio yeah. of a uh, no, I'm with you 100. percent And I don't, I am not a VR guy, and this is yeah. really tempted. Yeah. We have the Vive and the uh, it's all set up because yeah, the kids so use it. So. I, I I haven't tried it yet, but I believe that um, Alex works fine with existing mixed reality headsets. But I guess and and we really don't know much about this um, this new coming headset. But I suspect it's just going to be higher resolution essentially. Um, so maybe this will uh, uh, work out to be one of the better experiences for this game um, if yeah. it can ever come out. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. it's going to We don't know much about it. But anyway, they have announced that they're working on it, I guess. so. Well, if I we'll don't see. come in next week, I'll be playing Half-Life Alex. Yeah, I might look at that over the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a lot of Not fun. Not that days of the week mean anything to me anymore, but whatever. Yeah, you know. what, what day is this? Where are we? <laughs> yeah. What are we doing now? I did that all weekend. On Sunday, I, I, when I woke up Sunday, I literally thought it was Monday morning. and was delighted to discover it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then I woke up Monday and I said, it's Friday, right? This is, right? No? Okay. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Everything's upside down. Somebody, HD editor in our chat room says, you know what the future is? 
a uh, VR experience of New York City pre-COVID. Yeah. You know, just walking around, talking to you people. You know what they should be doing during this thing is Riding sending out all those Google cars and recording everything for Street View now oh, when no yeah, one's when there. Oh, yeah, when no one's there. Yeah. Much less you know? blurring necessary. Yep. That's true. <laughs> it's a big opportunity for Street View. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's a nice view of the Eiffel Tower with no one in front of it for some reason. You know? Yeah, I saw yeah. a picture of the Place de la Concorde with nobody yep. there. I've never, I mean, it's yeah. like, what? I know, can you imagine? It's crazy. That's the worst roundabout in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes, it is it. insane. And there was yeah. nothing. No cars, nothing. Uh, our show today brought to you by a very timely, all of our advertisers are, uh, are, are here for you during this tough time, ExpressVPN. Uh, ExpressVPN is, is the VPN. It's the one I use for a lot of reasons. They respect your privacy, their ultimate security. They never leak your location. They don't log uh, and we know all of this for a variety of reasons. I'll get into the details later. But also they're fast. And I think a lot of times when people think VPN, virtual private network, uh, they, they understand the benefits of protecting your privacy. So nobody can, your, even your ISP can't see what you're doing online. Protecting your security while you're in an open Wi-Fi access point. Everybody knows that. But I think we also go, but gosh, you know, it's going to slow me down. And so I'm only going to use it when I have to, or I just can't put up with the, not express VPN. It's fast. So fast that you can use it to watch TV in other countries. Now, I know you're probably, you've probably already burned through your Netflix and your Amazon Prime, but there's a lot of great stuff on uh, Netflix in Japan, for instance, if you like anime. With ExpressVPN, you can take your TV watching to the next level, unlocking movies and shows that are only available in other countries. So here's the deal. You're, you're, in, you're on your, you've got Netflix running. You start up ExpressVPN. They have apps for Mac, PC, uh, Android, iOS. I use it on Linux, too. You can use it everywhere. Big button. You press the button. But before you do, normally it will just, if you just press the button, it'll say, okay, uh, we're going to use the VPN server closest to you for best performance. But you can say, no, I want to be in Tokyo right now. You press the button, choose the country, press the button. Now you're in Tokyo. And when you go to Netflix, you're already logged in. When you go to Netflix, you get all the Japanese shows. Or you could go to UK Netflix where they've got Doctor Who and Star Trek and you can binge on those episodes. You just fire up the application, change your location to the UK, refresh Netflix. They're all there. And I thought when they first said, you could do this, I thought, oh, I'm an, I better ask. I asked Netflix. I said, well, yeah, of course you can, but it's so slow. Why would you? They don't mind. They, you, you're, you know, you're a Netflix subscriber. That it's okay. But the beauty is they didn't know about, I guess, ExpressVPN, high def, full streaming speed. It really works. It works so well that I've often forgotten that I've been running ExpressVPN, forget to turn it off and just use it all day. You just don't notice. You could choose from almost 100 different countries. Think about all the Netflix libraries you could go through. Japanese Netflix, Hulu, it works on BBC's iPlayer, on YouTube. You can be anywhere in the world with ExpressVPN. Look, there are a lot of choices, I know. There are even free VPNs and very low-cost VPNs. i got to point out one thing. It's expensive to run a VPN. If they're not charging you, they're making the money somehow. Almost certainly by selling your information, sometimes even by injecting ads into your stream. Not ExpressVPN. Their trusted server technology means they can't log what you're doing. When you log into ExpressVPN and set up, start up a VPN session, that VPN server spins up just for you, and it's sandboxed. It cannot write to disk, and when you leave, it closes down. No trace of your use remains. And this is not just me saying it, not just ExpressVPN saying it. They, they were recently audited by a trusted third-party security firm, and they said, yep, ExpressVPN is exactly what they say they do in their privacy policy. That trusted server works exactly as they say. ExpressVPN. It works with everything, not just your computers, but your media consoles, your smart TVs. You can watch what you want on the go or on the big screen wherever you are. I love ExpressVPN. Everybody should have a subscription. Now, I said it's not free, but it's not expensive. In fact, we've got a great deal for you. If you go to expressvpn.com slash windows and sign up for a year, you'll get an extra three months. You get 15 months, and that brings the price down below $7 a month. Believe me, this is well worth it. Protect your privacy, protect your security, and expand the videos, your video supply, 
The perfect time for it, expressvpn.com slash windows. We love ExpressVPN. We thank them for supporting our show, and uh, we thank you for supporting Windows Weekly by going to that special address, letting them know you saw it here, expressvpn.com slash windows. Now, I think we head to the back of the book and Paul Thorat's tip of the week. Paul? Yeah, if you haven't seen this, you should go to the Microsoft 365 blog. They've been publishing an astonishing array of content about working remotely and staying safe, all this stuff. And it's 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 actually pretty incredible. One of the things that they threw up there was about staying safe digitally. And uh, they were talking specifically about the, um, the phishing type attacks that are occurring now because of the coronavirus. And that I think the figure was 91% of um, malware that we get comes through email. And they have a bunch of advice. A lot of it's up, you know, really obvious, stay up to date, et cetera. The, the most important one in this list to me that you can do as an individual is to use multi-factor authentication yes. on all of your online accounts. Yes. If you're not doing this, <laughs> you got to take the time to do this now, like right now. Like Microsoft account, Google account, every, every account you have that supports multi-factor authentication, you have to enable this. Um, this is the simplest thing you can do to protect your uh, yourself online or the maybe the best thing or whatever. Um, but uh, check out the Microsoft post um, for all, the, especially for their email advice. Um, a lot of, you know, the, uh, the zero day thing we were talking about earlier is spread via email attachments. You know, people just do, 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 do click, click, you know, double clicking stuff like this, you know, uh, maybe practice some common sense, et cetera. But uh, make sure you're using multi-factor authentication as well. If you uh, bing protecting against coronavirus-themed phishing attacks... That Nobody would... does that, Leo. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to be nice. <laughs> just bing um, it. Yeah. Just bing it. Just bing it. What did you just say? <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just, just trying to be nice. <laughs> no, you search in, your, in the search engine mm -hmm. of your uh, yes. choice. Uh, you can find that because it's a long URL. Or you can just go to therot.com and poll. Right. Paul has a link there. Um, yeah, that's that's actually. I, I would imagine every company worth its salt is going to have you know do what they yeah. can to help people because this is just you know you get a lot yeah. of people going home, a lot of our staff, uh, and they they're right. used to working here with the support of a great IT department and a lot of protection. You know, we have Cisco yeah. Umbrella running and all sorts of you know stuff. They're going home. And, you know, the thing I'm most worried about, and I think everybody should be, is, of course, it's tough right now. But then if these guys get affected and come back to work with their infected laptops, sure. suddenly you're going to see a wave of ransomware and other uh, uh, attacks yeah. because they're just they're bringing them back to the network. They're bringing the virus back. Hooray. Uh, you can overextend the um, analogy between computer viruses and malware and, uh, and COVID-19. And yet. And yet. <laughs> There is, a, yeah, there is, there is, you know, there are parallels. There, there are, are reasons we use those terms for yeah, both. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have to say, I, <laughs> you know, I, as most of us, I'm obsessively reading every article I can, and uh, I got to one on Medium written by a guy who said, "I'm an expert in viral growth hacking, so I think I know a little bit about COVID-19." And it's like, oh boy, no. <laughs> You don't. <laughs> I am a, I'm a social media expert, so I think I'm uniquely uh, positioned to explain how COVID happens. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. uh, Look, if oh. you want your SEO to go up, I'm just saying it helps prevent COVID. Oh, Lord. Um, you have, you're, you're continuing. This is a rare opportunity for you to sit down and do some coding. Yeah, I've done a bunch of it lately. Nice. Um, I got it just as an aside. I, I got an email from someone who used to be a Throt Premium member, and he canceled his uh, premium account because he discovered that in the settings for the account, it was auto selected to like auto renew after a year or whatever. And he was really upset about that. So he canceled his account, and then he wrote me and he said, You know what you should do is because of the COVID thing, like a lot of companies are doing, you should make all your premium content should just be free. And uh, I didn't write this back, but as uh, uh, maybe some insight into the way my mind works, I thought about writing back and saying, I will do that if, <laughs> you, uh, if you donate 100% of your salary yeah. <laughs> to the, <laughs> the charity of my choice. <laughs> if you, if you yeah. do that, I will, I will then I mean, like, but so. Oh, I get that. We do all have the this time. premium subscription. I get that all thing, the time. People say, yeah, well, what, just, do you, what do you care if it costs money to do a show? 
Why do you yeah, cancel? Sorry. What do you? I care? work at a company that employs <laughs> six people, and you know, yeah. what are you we're care? struggling like everyone else. Yeah. I, but yeah, you're right. I should give up my one source of income. Yeah. Anyway, um, so anyway, as part of Throp Premium, uh, one of the things I've been doing is documenting these programming projects I've been working on. So last fall, over four or five months, whatever it was, I wrote this Notepad clone. And then on the side, I wrote like a WPF, like a Windows Presentation Foundation version of it. And I completed oh, it. Like I neat. actually finished it. It's really cool. How different and was that? Is, How hard was that? A lot of it was pretty hard. I mean, there's um, there's some cool stuff in WPF. And then there's some stuff that's really, really hard to do. Um, but I I kind of threw it out to the audience. I was like, if you want, I'll document it. But I, I kind of want this to go quickly. And so I think, yeah, today I published the 10th article. I actually have one more I'm going to do. But... Um, I did it over, it, it really, it took less than 10 days to just write it out, you know? Um, so if you, if you're a Throp Premium so member, you great. can build the app for yourself. Yeah. It's this pretty cool. Such a great boy. What a great series and well worth subscribing. Yeah. Like today I added uh, drag and drop support. So if you have a text file, you can drag it onto the app and you know, whatever. So <clears throat> just, uh, uh and just it's fun aside, by like the I, way, isn't this fun? Yeah. Coding again. Aren't you happy doing yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coding is so satisfying. I don't. Uh, maybe it's just it's a certain frustrating type of and satisfying. It's like being a parent, Leo. It's the um, <laughs> the highest highs and the lowest lows. I um, I really enjoy it. I it, yeah. it for me, it's uh, it's an intellectual exercise. It's it's yeah. It could be frustrating when if you have a bug and you can't yeah. find it, and then but it's ultimately very satisfying. I will say, uh, yeah. If when I figure stuff out, like I actually I figured out some stuff that I feel is you know pretty like I'm actually pretty proud of myself. Like I. There is there is no feeling like that. Like you you're like oh my god I actually did that. <laughs> like I you know, but I mean it's it's interesting. Yeah. So uh, if you want uh you know if you are uh, interested in this kind of thing I I've now documented it so you could build the app for yourself if you'd like. Very nice. Um, yeah, and also just as an aside too. I mean in these days I mean this is a great time to support people making content in the same way that it's a great time to support local restaurants or businesses as you can, depending on how they're open or not or whatever. I mean, um, you know, we're, this is, this going to be a huge financial crisis happening here, uh, as, and businesses are going to lay people off and go out of business and there's going to be lots of problems. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, whatever you can make your own decisions on what you think is important, but I mean, um, this is a good time if you're able to support the people and businesses that matter to you. That's all. Yeah. I, you know, we we uh, took our life in our hands and ordered uh, Mexican out last the other night. <laughs> we, we, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We we missed we missed eating out. So we do much. these little theme takeout things. Like yeah. we did sushi the other night. We did uh, you know our local place that we really like yeah. uh, last week. Kenji Alt yeah. Lopez, who I really like, uh, he uh, has his blog is seriouseats dot com. Had mm -hmm. a very good piece on why it's okay to eat takeout food and how to you know how to eat it safely and so forth. But there's uh, yeah. there's no evidence that. Uh, that uh, right. food can carry the uh, COVID virus. I mean, just don't get Chinese food, am I right? <laughs> yeah. This is how stupid people are. Like, seriously. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't eat any like, pangolin at this I, point, I, but I, yeah, like, I know what you're saying. Like, it's unbelievable. Um, Every time you so, hear that, you're like, what? 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 <laughs> what does that right, even geez. make sense? Like, how does that even make yeah, sense? No. no. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, and that's a good way to support your local, uh, you know, restaurants because yes, they're going through a really tough time. Right now, yep. all of the restaurants yep. in town are closed. All the bars, everything. I talked to the, the guy who owns our favorite bar and uh, restaurant, and they usually are very busy on weekends. And and now they're just doing takeout stuff. And um, th this is the place Mary Jo knows of because I send her photos all the time of the beer selection. There's <laughs> crazy. And um, he was saying he says actually he goes obviously the weekends are down, but like the weekdays are up because oh good a lot of people just want to get stuff to go. He's like we just had the best Thursday we've ever had. Oh good, <laughs> you know that's incredible. And that's that's yeah. neat. I mean that's that's really cool. But I'm sure this, uh, I'm sure there are still many servers who aren't working. Oh of course, of course, who are out yep. of work. Uh, and yep. most most small businesses you know don't have. Well, they exist res tips. Right. Yeah. And they don't have a reservoir of, of funds to keep no, these people no, on. No. On That's the why payroll. I went into restauranting. I, I'm rich and I just wanted something to do. Yeah. Is something uh, you don't hear a lot. It's, just, um, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it really breaks my heart. It's very, very yeah, difficult it's right tough. now. Yeah. It's tough. Um, and you have a pick of yeah, the week as well. A couple of picks. Um, so this week, uh, the new Doom came out. Um, you should just skip that. It doesn't matter. But what came out next to it was a remake of Doom 64, which was the version of Doom for the Nintendo 64. Oh. I never got to play this. I always wanted to play this. 
It's only $5. What it looks like is the original Doom 1 and Doom 2, except it, I don't know if it's dynamic colored lighting, but it has colored lighting. So the environments are way prettier than they were in the original Doom games, which are, you know, kind of brown and gray, basically. But the same, um, it's but the same music, the same plot and all yeah, that it's, stuff. It's, yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's the original Doom. It's, it's, but it's, it, the levels are different, and then the look of it is different. And I believe for the, the modern version, the one that just shipped this week on Xbox One and PC, I think there's a new episode as well with additional uh, levels. So, uh, oh, it looks a fun. lot better. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. It's a be beautiful in the, no, that's not it. <laughs> the, the, the thing you're showing is not it. This is Doom Eternal. Might, is this Doom that, Eternal? No, uh, that must be the new. Yeah. Uh, Doom I don't 3. Know. Oh, Doom I don't 3. Know. Okay. I just, yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I was going to say that's your not link. it. <laughs> I thought that looked really good. <laughs> oh, did I send, did I, I linked to the wrong thing. Yeah. Thing. Is it Doom? Doom 64. 64. It looks like Doom. Here it is. It looks like the original Doom. Here it is. But it's colorful. Like it's really colorful. How do I, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Now that's more like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. It's, I can it's hear neat. the music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly right. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, what yeah. fun. I was. I mean, I played this game so much. I there was a a, a couple month period where I, I had to stay at someone's apartment. Um, whatever it doesn't matter. But I I I went outside and I could hear the music outside. Oh yeah, and I knocked on the door and I said, "I was." This guy answers. I said, "Are you playing Doom?" And he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "I'm sorry, is it too loud?" He says, "I'm sorry, is it too loud?" I said, "No, no, it's awesome." I was like, <laughs> "I just heard it," and I just started. We just started talking because I heard him playing Doom. You know, oh, that is so fun. So that's a, yeah. that's five bucks separate purchase from the uh, Doom Eternal, yep. but still, that's great. Yeah, I'd much yep. rather play that, the classic Doom. Yeah. And I can even hear the doors opening. I know. Shook. You know, those, <laughs> it's, just, it's so great. It's just classic. And it's How many still millions so of great. hours have we wasted on that game? Oh, I'm going. I'm doing more of it this week. It's fantastic. Yeah, I think I might fire that up. It'd be fun. Play it on the yeah. old Xbox. Um, and one more. One more. One more. So Google Podcasts. Um, I actually, I, I really like Google Podcasts. And the one thing that's interesting about it to me is like they, they never had downloading, like auto downloading until actually to yesterday or today. And this kind of changed the way I approach podcasts because I kind of would hoard podcasts for like offline use. Like right. I'd be like, you know, you set up rules. Like I always want the five latest ones or whatever. And then it kind of occurred to me like, I, why? It doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> actually just stream it. Who cares? If I'm at the gym listening, it's on Wi-Fi. It doesn't matter, you know. But this week they released a version on iOS. It was only on Android before. And concurrently with that, they updated the version on Android to match the new features that are also in iOS. And among those things, by the way, are uh, auto downloads. So if you do want auto downloads, they're available. It's a nice minimalist app. It's got like kind of a three pane view. Um, the only, I don't actually use it now because I have, I'm doing Sonos and they don't have a, they don't have Sonos integration. Um, but if they did, who does, I'd go back, I'd go back to it. Who does, uh, is it pocket uh, casts you're using? What pocket casts. Yeah, pocket casts. Okay. Yeah. And actually, I've always liked it, Google podcasts on Android. Uh, one of the reasons yeah. I liked it on Android is you could have a widget with each individual podcast. So yeah. you, you just tap that. I'm sure that doesn't work on uh, iOS, but Wait, still so, like, pocket casts on Sonos is awesome. Like, but I, I I wish I would love, I would, I would use Google podcasts. It's, it's a matter of time. I'm sure it's Sonos will do that. Oh, I yeah, so. Look at that. That's pretty. I, I actually really like Google podcasts and because uh, it's my Google account, it knows all my shows. So that's nice too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, good pick, but now it's time for Mary Jo Foley and her enterprise pick of the week. My enterprise pick is Microsoft 365 F1. F1 stands for First Line Worker 1. So right now, Microsoft has M365 F1. But what they're going to do is take the F1 plan they have now and rename it to F3. So if you're on F1, <laughs> you're just going to start seeing your subscription show up as F3. And the reason they're doing that is to clear the decks for a new F1 that's going to be cheaper and have fewer features. So right now, Microsoft 365 F1 costs $10 per user per month. When they introduce the new F1, it's going to be $4 per user per month. But of course, they don't give you anything for free. You're going to be losing some features. And specifically, I believe the one that people might notice the most is virtual desktop rights. 
Um, there's also other things you're going to lose by going to the new F1. So if you if you already are an F1 subscriber, you have to do absolutely nothing. You'll just start seeing F3 show up on your subscription, and you won't pay any more money. It's still ten dollars. It's too better. I, yeah, do you feel I know. like they have there, too like many plans? F1, F3. <laughs> it's, it's, oh no, it's no, no there, there needs to be more, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I said to Microsoft, are you also going to have an F5? And they're like, Mary Jo, really? And I'm well, like, I'm not thing. suggesting it. Like, it. Don't, you, don't you think what they need is an F4? <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's like F3, no, but know, it's like a little better. But what happened to F2? There is no F2 and there is no F4. Just like in Office 365 today, there's F, there's E1, E3, E5. There is no E2 or E4. It's just like uh, BMW. The, the even numbers are with um, <laughs> four door versions and odd numbers two door, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It was very confusing. It's very. It sounds confusing, and it is. But when you think about it, all you need to really know is if you are an F one subscriber now, you're just going to become an F three subscriber. That's it. <sighs> and your code name of the week is very fitting because these are the things roaming the streets of Manhattan. Yep. Today. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're always roaming the they streets will. here. So. I know. They're going to be more of them roaming the streets soon. The code name is Coyote. I got this code name from The Walking Cat. And um, this is a Microsoft research project. Here's how they describe it. Coyote is an open source .NET framework. So not the .NET framework. It's just a, a framework that happens to be built on .NET. And this is for people who are quote, designing, implementing, testing code in ways that embrace non-determinism and asynchrony. So this is for people, for programmers who mostly are building like distributed cloud apps and those kinds of apps, right? Where non-determinism means as a programmer, you don't always have control over all your inputs. That's my non, that's my layperson's description of that. Um, so, you know, usually Microsoft research projects, you're like, yeah, that's cool. They're doing something. Who knows when we'll ever see it? Well, Microsoft's already using this in Azure Compute, Azure Batch, and Azure Blockchain. And so now it is available on GitHub so that anybody who wants to kick the tires of it and see what you can build using this kind of code, you can just go start using it now. So, yeah, Coyote. There's a whole article if you search, um, if you Bing Coyote and Microsoft Research... Um, you will find the Microsoft Research Post all about this, where, where there's a lot more detail. There's some architectural diagrams and um, links to where you can get the code. I may have started something I'm going to regret. <laughs> <laughs> just bing it. Just bing it. I just went to bing.com right now to see if it's still a thing. And look, there it is. <laughs> there it is. You know, I do use the bing wallpaper of the day. On all of my I know, it's systems. Beautiful, right? Oh, the Bing, it, that's beautiful. And also, yeah. I just noticed, thanks to Bing, it's Tolkien Reading Day. See? That's right. And the, their picture of the day, the Radcliffe Camera, Oxford, England. Yeah. Tolkien yes. Reading Day. So let's all read some Tolkien today. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's my favorite wallpaper. I have it on all my Linux that is machines. Yeah. <laughs> In case you don't believe me. All your me, Linux machines. All my Linux Bing. machines have the Bing wallpaper of the day as the <laughs> wallpaper. Uh, it's actually really easy to do it on, on Linux. I don't know how hard it is to do on Windows, but it's a very nice wallpaper. <laughs> it's not possible, Leo. Very it's, it's very easy. We don't have that. <laughs> uh, I think, unfortunately, my, remem my memory is you have to install... This silly little Bing search yeah. box, which I never wanted, in order to have the Bing wallpaper of the day on uh, Windows. Oh, okay. The dynamic theme in the Microsoft Store lets you install it. Okay, that's good. Nice. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk beer with Mary Jo Foley, our beer guru. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the beer of the week is from a very interesting brewery called Scratch Brewing. And Scratch Brewing is a brewery that forages many of the ingredients what? that it uses in beer. That yes. doesn't sound like a good idea. They use mushrooms. Oh. They use leaves. Oh, flowers, they don't forage them out of dumpsters. They forage them out of the no. woods. Oh, okay. They forage them out of a national forest oh, in okay. Illinois. That's different. Okay. <laughs> right. D different so, kind of foraging. Okay. I different kind of foraging. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not dumpster diving foraging. Okay. Not that. Kind. <laughs> okay. No. So they. 
they have a beer called the Lemon Balm Sour mm. that I get to try. And mm. it's made with lemon balm, which is almost like a mint type plant. And also with lemon grass. And it's a wild ale. So it's naturally fermented. They don't even use hops in this wow. beer. Wow. Yep. Um, and it tastes... Does that mean so it's less fizzy or less... Uh... No, no, it doesn't really mean that. It's that you know, it's a wild ale, so you can use other things to actually ferment beer besides hops. Like some people have used chocolate to ferment beer really? before. Huh. Yes, because there's um, natural so there's yeasts that occur, uh, that uh, occur in other things. Well, you still combine it with yeast, but oh. you just don't use the hops. Oh. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, oh. so it's it's very interesting, but it still tastes like beer. And this one tastes like the perfect lemon. Um, like lightly sour beer. It's a very like not, it doesn't taste like a fake lemony taste. It has a very natural, almost like a s spicy gingery kind of flavor yum. to it. Yum, yum, and yum. it's fantastic. So if you ever see any scratch beers, I also recently had one of their mushroom beers. It does not taste like mushroom, it tastes like beer, but really, really delicious. Yum. Lemon balm sour. Yeah. It's very good. Foraged from the finest forests. Exactly. Not from dumpsters. <laughs> not, not yet, but you know, if this thing keeps going. It could, it could be. Yeah. You never know. You never know. You never know. <laughs> uh, well, I think it's time for us all to uh, sanitize and mm -hmm. say goodbye to Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Uh, we do Windows Weekly every Wednesday, and we will continue. We are never going to stop. This is, uh, this oh. is <laughs> never. Jeez, Leo. You're going to be old <laughs> and gray. <laughs> I hope you're right. <laughs> like me. I, I really do. <laughs> um, you no, know, because I love doing this show, and uh, and I think we need to do it. So tune in every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 UTC. We stream it live, audio or video, at twit.tv slash live. Uh, and if you say, I don't want a 480p stream from YouTube, we have other choices like Twitch and Mixer. Mm -hmm. So don't feel, uh, don't feel limited by uh, Google's choices. You can also uh, get on-demand versions of the show. At, you choose the quality at twit.tv slash ww. We, we can all agree we're best seen on audio. Best seen on audio. <laughs> I, I never will understand why people want video, uh, but they did, and so we did it for them, and, you know, sure. whatever. Um, but, yeah, you can get it on audio or video at twit.tv slash ww. My, my top choice on this, though, if you would... Please, if you want to download Google Podcasts or Pocket Casts or Stitcher or Slacker or uh, Overcast, there's so many different podcast apps, download one of them or, or maybe more than one and, and subscribe to the show so that way you always have a copy waiting for you whenever you're in the mood to hear Paul and Mary Jo wax philosophical yeah. about Windows <laughs> and Microsoft. <laughs> Stay healthy, fellas. Paul Therott's at therott.com, leanpub.com for his books, The Field Guide to Windows 10. Mary Jo Foley blogs for ZDNet at allaboutmicrosoft.com. And uh, Mary Jo's in the heart of the city, the fastest growing COVID epidemic in the world right now. Yeah. So please take care Guys of yourself. always got to be number one. <laughs> always. Oh, man. Yep, uh, I'm being very safe. Very. Thank you. I'm glad. Because we want you back next week on Windows Weekly. We'll see you then, folks.